Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Greenfield's Finest Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Zebird Zidell. With me, as always, my boys are in the building. We got Dr. Schulz, Anthony Schulley. What's up, Schulz? What's yeah. up, man? How you guys doing? And then my co-host, my main man, Moneyline Welsh. What up, Moneyline? What's going on? Not too much. Just to give everyone a real quick quick heads up uh i have i'm pretty sure we picked up some new listeners if you're listening on the audio that's great if you wouldn't mind checking out our youtube at greenfield's finest podcast just type that in and hit that subscribe button and you'll get instant notifications every time we upload any of our episodes any of our shorts anything like that that would be a big help also uh coming up may 14th big comedy show at comptra theater it's gonna be myself Colin Chamberlain, back from New York City, is going to be headlining. Marcus Cox, a special guest. Dr. Schultz might be making an appearance at that one. And a happy birthday to John Rosado's daughter, Josie. She's not here today. He's not here today because he's at her birthday party. But happy birthday, happy Josie. Happy birthday, Josie. My goddaughter, Josie. Dad yeah. of the year, old Rosado, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's like, dude, I can't do it. <laughs> That's father of the year. So uh, I think that's... Surely, a- anniversary. Yes, uh, I want to say happy anniversary <laughs> to my beautiful wife, Rosa. Yesterday was our anniversary, 13 years of bliss. Happy 13 years. You believe that? 13 That's fucking, fucking great. 13 years, years since I had a swine flu at your wedding. Yeah, yeah. You, I think you had the COVID, the first case. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was literally swine flu. Time. Was it? Yeah, there's not a doubt in my mind I had a swine flu. I give it to you, though, Jack. You, you I up, made it through the important parts. You, you gave me gamesmanship. Dude. You did. drank a little bit, and then you went and slept in DC's car for yeah. a while. I so. like I like robo-trip, dude. I was like fucking <laughs> just pounding <laughs> fucking Dayquil. Yeah. Whatever Dayquil. it takes, dude. I'm not a judger. It was brutal, dude. Day- Glad you were there. I, that too. was the first wedding that I was invited to out of any of my friends. Cause I was like, I was like... Off the drugs, on the drugs, off the drugs, <laughs> and I got off just long just enough, just in time, just to get an invitation. You know what <laughs> I mean? I was like, surely I'm still coming to this thing, you know, right? No, oh, I was sober. you bring a good time whenever you want, buddy. Yeah, I was sober for that one, but I remember that was the first wedding. I was like, yeah, that that's the infamous uh, Frank Diesel. It's a Frank Diesel story. We gotta tell this. So, Jack, you want to tell it? Yeah, we were. I mean, Shuli's wedding. Like I said, I was literally. I, I had swine flu. Uh and I was sat at a very like it was a it was a random table. Oh like, yeah, you were table. you were in the it collection was, it, it, it table. Was, yeah, yeah, it was like all right, where are we, where these gonna... dudes know each other, right? They yeah, these people kind of know each other. It was like, dude, I think it was the first time I met Doctor Dave, but I'm sitting and somehow I got stuck in between our friend's dad and his girlfriend. I was stuck in the middle of them because he didn't want to sit next to. I his was gonna say that was by choice. I didn't give you a sign. No, it wasn't just a sign. Table. <laughs> that was that was yeah. That was our friend's dad just being like, "Hey, I, I can't be around her anymore. You have to sit next to her," which wasn't great for me. But I was so out of it, it didn't matter. And she was like, "It was a, it was an interesting dinner to say the least." But she was like, "Hey, f- hey, Frank, do you want some of my steak?" I don't want to look like a pig because she didn't want to eat all her steak. And he just looks at me with the biggest smile on his face ever. And he's like, well, it's a little late for that. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and as sick as I was, dude, I spit my fucking drink out. Risotto's mom was at the table. Yeah. His sisters. <laughs> like, dude, it was it was unbelievable. The, the, the comedic timing from Frank Diesel at that time. And he was, knew it. Oh, he knew it. Me and Lester were fucking dying. It was it was genius dude it was it was one of the one Funniest. of the funnier things i've ever been a part of in my life dude just because he was like well it's a little late for that is it and her, her face just dropped and i couldn't hold it in the table couldn't hold it in <laughs> we, risotto's mom was like what the fuck is going on <laughs> like it was just uh it was something but yeah man that's crazy that was 13 years ago yeah we're, yeah. we're getting up here fellas you ain't kidding wdve boom look at us i mean who all thought? grown up <laughs> Two years ago, we'd end up here. You guys did great. Not uh, not us guys, but you guys did awesome. It's, What's good for the goose <laughs> is good for the gander. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just busting balls. We uh, So if you didn't catch it, we were on DVE last Friday, uh, 745 primetime. Uh, we did a little gear grinder spot with uh, Randy Bauman and Bill Crawford. It went it went very well, I thought. We, we got really good feedback from everybody. Uh, people shared the shit out of it. People hit me up, hit Z Bird up, hit everybody up. Uh, it was pretty. It was pretty awesome. It was. It was finally two years of grinding this fucking podcast. I, <laughs> it was a nice. It was nice to get a little break and get some recognition and yeah, you know, I mean, get some momentum here. Cause I, I know we we dealt. We're picking up listeners like crazy. Uh, I hope it's a weekly, monthly, 
regular, some type of regular deal on DBE, which I think it's going to be. Uh, I, if you guys, I know we ask you to do a lot of shit. We ask you to vote for shit. We ask you to share shit. But if you guys tweet, I don't know, we tag someone on, tag Bill, tag Randy on Facebook, tweet at him, let him know you want to see us weekly, monthly, whatever they could do, we'll, we'll, we're in. Because it, <laughs> it was a blast and it would, it turned out, I mean, z went live from a stranger's house. <laughs> yeah, that, that was great. I mean, I, I really, and uh, like their reaction when we got done, because we did it with no, no cussing or nothing, but their reaction was like, that was a 10 out of 10. And I knew, like, I felt like when we were done, I was like, dude, we fucking, that was really good. That, and the, yeah, the feeling of when we were done, there was no, usually if we do a podcast or you know, something, I'm like, oh, that was all right. Or like, you know, when you, you know, when you did well and uh, I was ready to run through a fucking wall. Yeah. All right, wait, I got a question. So you guys, obviously it was pre-taped. You didn't do it right then. We right. did it on, so we did it on a Zoom meeting on Thursday afternoon. Right. So were you anxious, like? To hear that yeah. motherfucker on the radio, like, how is it going to come out? Did they, or did they give you, like, like props right afterwards? Like, dude, no, that was they, great, they guys. Gave us, they gave us, I mean, Croft was, like, literally, and, and Randy Bauman. Uh, Randy Bauman really went out on a limb the whole morning show. Like, you got to listen to these guys. Like, yeah, they you, pumped yeah, us yeah, up. Yeah, they pumped you whole... guys up good. I, I was listening, dude. And I, I was, I, you know, I was wearing my uh, heart mm-hmm. on my sleeve, dude. <laughs> I was very happy to see, it, you know, people loving everything you said. I got a million text calls. You know, like, everybody's yeah, it was like, oh, really, dude, it was, that's great. Yeah, it was good feedback. Yeah, their reaction after, really, I, I, I knew it was fucking fun. fun. You just know, like, you just know. You know what well, I mean? And I hit him up, and he's like, dude, that's the feeling you get when you're off. I was fucked. I took, pre, <laughs> I pro, took pre-workout before it. Like, oh, dude, I was dude, fucking. You're doing I, bumps. I was wound up. <laughs> uh, but, no, it was awesome. So, if we, dude, if we. If we get on there weekly, monthly, whatever, it's gonna it's it's gonna help, and it's uh it's exciting shit. The the one the one key thing about that that, that well you know they said they were looking to do some more stuff was they were like this is their, the guy's first time on here and they, and then Randy at the end said I'll talk to you soon and like I noticed they don't do that to everybody and the other thing is if you read the actual description on DVE it said the debut of Greenfield's finest podcast segment. What's grinding your gears? So, like the day in my head, if it was just a one-time thing, it wouldn't be a debut. Yeah, they they would just say like you're bringing up these dudes, but debut that's like chapter one. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, we're not gonna be on this week. You said they're going to Vegas. They're in Vegas. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see what it brings. But even if even if it was a one-time thing, it was uh, still pretty cool. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. But Jack did make a good point. If you're out there and you're in the Twitter land, if you could tweet at them, yeah, you know I mean that that would yeah, be a start big bugging help. them a little bit. I just want to stay on their minds. Yeah. But yeah, it uh, it was it was fun, man. I was you, it, yeah. I mean, it was cool. Like, you, I, sometimes I act like I'm too cool for shit. Like that was just cool. It was a cool moment. I see that sure. you're speechless, Jack. Yeah. You're never speechless. You're like da, 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 da. <laughs> Elon Musk buys Twitter. Forty four bill. I love it. He probably had it on him. I love I love that move. Do you think he just called Jack? Like, yeah, dude, you want me to Venmo you that forty four bill, you peasant? Yeah. Oh, he definitely <laughs> was. He was like, you want that in singles? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm excited to see what it brings. Because Twitter, Twitter's the best out of all of them, but uh, even Twitter, it, it was getting a little. It's, it's getting a little. I, I want to see shit flying again. Yeah. I want to see people saying wild insane, west. this insane shit. Yeah. Right, that's yeah. the wild west. Dude, there's no wild west left now. Now the the you know social media is where it's at. And well, if I, you if you can't hack it on Twitter, get off. Yeah, or just lay in it. the weeds and look. Just watch. I, yep. I think, and, and I think something else Elon will do for sure is start getting rid of the bots. You know That's what, what he mean? said. Right. That was one of his main objectives. Yeah, like get rid of the bots because like, the bots ruin. You go to look at comments. You look because, dude, there's funny. Dude, there's so much funny shit on Twitter. Yeah, but you go and like look at the bots and like the bots, it's, they just ruin all the comments. So it's like, all right, and you stop looking. Right. I mean, I get people don't want to put their like, you know, I mean, you can't put your government on there and say crazy shit and go work, you know, for a bank. But I, you know, you don't have to. The bots suck. The bots are ruining Twitter. I don't know. I'm excited. People, people are pretty pissed, but who gives a fuck? I mean, what's what's so people get mad about everything? Yeah, obviously, obviously, everybody's a victim. But I mean, geez. Uh, me and Z Bird, we went golfing on Sunday. Yeah, nice day. I uh, went out and hacked it up. Hacked old Westwood up. Uh, Westwood <laughs> is unbelievable. So Westwood's a golf course in West Mifflin. It they think they're Oakmont, which is and they're they're nowhere close to it. And there's this if you're familiar with it, hole four at Westwood, there's there's like 
what are those phone wires, electrical wires going right. through? Going oh, no, those through are the, high power lines. Yeah, that's power like, lines. That's yeah, the word that's I'm like for. high voltage. Shit, yeah, right? high voltage you power that, lines you're dying. going through like a part, a uphill par three. So the power lines are have been in play for years, which is like it's it's horrible. So I, they they're trying to take the power lines out. Good on them. They built, uh, it was like a a level on like Tony Hawk skate park. <laughs> there was a ramp. There was all this construction. There was just dirt. There wasn't really a fucking tee box. Uh-uh. It was, it was unbelievable. It was like the end of Happy a, Gilmore. Yeah, we put a picture up on it. Yeah, it it seriously looked like yeah, exactly. It looked like the end of Happy yeah, Gilmore. Yeah, like off the windshield. Yeah, th- it was, it was unbelievable. Even for Westwood and like you, they they didn't even mention like hey. Uh, whole four is a little ripped up. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. They used to say, Senshi Ather, you pulled on, and you're like, I lost the ball. I, I hit it right into the construction zone <laughs> on three. Like, dude, it's just, it's, the course is fucked, man. And, and the, 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 go- the cart path w- was literally like driving on a fucking BMX track. Every fucking hill, <laughs> every fucking little place. Was it bump, 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 bump? Like, dude, put, put some money back into that course because there's people going there. Dude, I mean it's it's so fucking close. Why wouldn't it be right? Busy? It's it's the closest for sure. It's that's that's their biggest asset. Absolutely, they're I, like the Pittsburgh Pirates of golf courses. Like people still <laughs> go there, they show up, but it fucking sucks year after year. You know what I mean? Now they got ramps in the middle of the golf course. You got fucking you know what I mean? R.J. Cronin coming down there doing a, a ten eighty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, guy, it, the guys at the construction site are selling everybody golf balls. Yeah, back I'm, get, to them and I'm, shit. Getting, I'm getting cat called while I'm trying to tee <laughs> off. You know? it's like, what the fuck's going on here? You Westwood? sexy little thing. You. Ah, <laughs> uh, speaking of golf. So I brought up Good Friday last week, and uh, Ed Monroe, a new listener, was very peeved that his team won. So he wanted to, he wanted me to mention that his team won the event at Good Friday. Uh, Asterisk, because you, you, didn't let, you didn't let me in the playoff. But right. yeah, congratulations, Ed. Thanks for listening. Hit the subscribe button, you motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, speaking of golf, I'm joining a Central Alumni Golf League. Wow. Not great for my brand. No, no, <laughs> no that's, that's like complete opposite Not, of your brand. I don't know if any of them listen. I don't know most of them. Uh, so we'll see. But Branching know, out. You're branching I, out, Jack. I can't get anybody to fucking play. And the one, <laughs> our one boy is in, the, in, in like our uh, golf group message. I seen him on uh, Sunday, and he was like, dude, do you just want to play with us? And I was like, yes. Because they they're, they're they, they it's on a spreadsheet. They got times, tea times. They're you know central. Yeah, they went to central. Central. They're fucking organized. So yeah, Central Alumni Golf League for Jack Welsh. We'll see how it goes. Like I said, not great for the brand. Yeah, I mean, I, unless I'm, you go there and shred it, dude. I'm all on. Yeah. I'm, I'm all on. <laughs> I'm all on bo- golf as much as possible, dude. Like it, for sure, because with our friends anymore, you put out a fucking group text. Like, hey, who wants to go golfing? And then uh, our buddy in California, Eddie, will say, I hope it pours. And that's, like, the only <laughs> response you get for, like, three days. Because Eddie literally kills everything in that golf He chain. kills the momentum because he can't come. Right. So he, like, literally will destroy any jokes, any momentum. He just he does. He runs that. And, like, whatever Eddie says kind of goes because he has, like, the, the brain power in that. And so, like, if Eddie <laughs> says it's going to pour, it's going to get a bunch of laughs and no one's going to sign up to go play golf with you. Well, well, I don't know. Dude, Eddie said it's going to rain. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I literally can't get a reply in that group message. So, here we go. Roll Vikes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I got my hair cut on. I go, I think I go every Friday morning. Been going this lady for years, man. She's been, she's been faded me up for the better part probably of 15 years a lot of a lot of my a lot of our friends go to her so it's a barber shop it's in east liberty so there's a few other barbers working there the pittsburgh uh parking authority is ruthless it's right on bomb there uh, i go like 10 45 i think my appointment is every uh every, every other friday so it you know i know like i have to pay to park because i'm gonna get hit they're yeah. there they roll they roll deep like they they when they come they come from both sides they swarm it and they hit it and get out because they get into crazy arguments because it's so it's East Liberty it's, it's East Liberty it's yeah. East Liberty yeah so the one barber parks directly in front it's like a loading zone I don't even know if it might even be fuck I wasn't handy it was that. street cleaning dude, yeah there was <laughs> no way this dude you could no you can't park there and he saw like they pulled up as he pulled up he had to see them he runs across the street gets a water comes into the barber shop. They go to ticket his car. He runs outside. 
freaks out on me. So he's arguing with the parking authority for it. The better part of 10 minutes, and she was like, let me go out there and get him. So she goes out there. Now they're arguing. The parking authorities are arguing. I'm sitting there with like a half a haircut. <laughs> I'm and I'm, like, finish I'm this. like, this this is an ideal for my haircut. This no. isn't going to go great. So they she finally gets him in there. He's freaking out. He's like, I was just only going to get a water. She's screaming, you you have to pay. And like, she's right. You do. Like, you just have to. Pay. He works there. He knows he had to pay. Dude, they are screaming at each other for like 10 minutes and like while she's like cutting my hair and you know when you're like arguing with somebody like your your adrenaline's going yeah. she's like shaking and i'm like oh she my god she made this shit extra tight oh my god my poor head she yeah. hasn't dude it's it's the worst haircut i got in 15 years she never fucked up that's why she didn't butcher it but like yeah i got I, I'm, at, I'm in hat mode for the next two weeks yeah. were there other okay so were there other people getting haircuts besides you no so well so marcus friend of ours is after me. So me and Marcus are literally just staring at each other like, what the fuck is going on? And then finally, another dude came in, and they're still arguing. So, like, I'm in one chair getting a fucked up haircut. Another customer's in another chair getting a fucked up haircut. And I'm just like, hey, guys, man, let's let's wait till everybody leaves to handle this. Yeah, yeah man. Wait, Jack, if I'm not mistaken, didn't you get a fucked up haircut one time when dude was fading you up and the clip fell off and he reverse, reverse mohawked you? Dude, yeah. So back in the day, I got a uh, – this was like – I don't that was know. that had to be twenty years, we twenty five years. We ago. were super young, I think. Reverse mode. High school. Uh, he was like going over the top, and like the so the uh, the clipper part, <laughs> the the guard. Yeah, the, the guard, guard literally just fell off, and I heard, <laughs> and it just like a chunk of my hair came like down my peripheral, and I was like, "What was that, BJ?" And he was like, oh, I got you a little bit. I was like, a little bit. <laughs> See, I Dude, thought it was I, way funnier because when I heard the story, it was like he was coming up and it was he reversed. Like, instead of having the mohawk, you had, like, the, the no, racing stripe. No, no, it, it was a bald spot. All right, well, let's keep yeah. it like it was a racing no, stripe. It was, yeah, it was way a big better. bald spot. But, yeah, that was, I mean, I even paid him for that, too. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> fucked that all up. But, yeah, it was, it was an awkward spot to be in when you just got people arguing in front of you like that. I'm like, man, let's land this plane and get out of here. So I, I I pay. She she was so heated. She had to move her car. She was just leave the money on the table. So I leave the money on the table. Then poor Marcus had to get a haircut. I was like, good luck, my man. And he <laughs> hit me up after he's done. He's like, dude, that went on my whole haircut. So like, dude, they fought for the better part of forty five minutes. Oh, it was just like, man, I you guys I, are wound up. I used to go out when I was doing construction. I would go to this one place downtown, and it was like it's right there. It was right by the old Kaufman's building. And they were like, they were great all the time. Cause I'd come in in my lunch break, and the dude would like let me come in. He'd be like, "Come on, buddy, get your hair cut." And I seen many of altercation in there, and they they had a washer and a dryer in the back, so they could do the, their own tiles and everything like that. And I, like that's where you would take it to. Like I take it to the dryer. I would see like dudes back there. Like people would be back there. Like like dudes were in there cutting hair sometimes. It didn't even have license. They weren't even supposed to be there. Like I remember the one time that one dude showed up to braid people's hair, and like. This girl was like Start crying Cause he like Did them too tight and, Like oh. yeah This girl And then he was like he, She was waiting for one person But this dude just came in Cause the other dude Was like I'm running late Had his buddy go in The uh, dude started You can start never Start braids up You can never When they When you're sitting In a barber shop And like just a random barber who has nobody who's like, hey man, you up? Like, no, dude, I'm good. Like, I'm gonna wait for, yeah. I'm gonna wait for them. Like, because the guy that has no customers is giving up the. There's fuck a up reason. Yeah, yeah there's right. a reason you got no customers. But, but this dude was sent in by the other dude. He's like, he's running late. He told me he could start. They said bringing the lefty, oh. and, and they're like, dude, I just remember hearing a girl, and they're like, I didn't end up seeing. It. Like, I guess they had like re- it was just a big. I felt so bad for this girl. She had something. That big. has to hurt so fucking bad. Yeah, dude. they like they're way too tight. But her uncle was there. And a dryer match broke out. You know what I mean? I'm just, like, <laughs> I'm just like, get me the fuck out of here. But the dude who used to cut my hair owned the place. Vic, real good dude. Always did a great job. But I seen a lot of action down in there, downtown Pittsburgh. NFL draft this weekend. Whoop, whoop. Todd mm-hmm. McShay is saying no quarterbacks are coming off the board in the first 19 picks, which means the Steelers are going to have the pick of the litter at number 20. What do you think they're doing? I hope they don't pick a quarterback. I hope we move up and get that uh, D tackle from Georgia. Yeah, the yeah, I, I like. I, I think they need defensive help more than you know, especially the, with the Mitch Trubisky trade or right. whatever. But I, I don't know. I've been reading some shit. Everybody's saying they're trying to get Malik Willis. They, that they're high on him. They, I, I've heard that, and like I've been hearing them say that. Here's my whole thing with that: don't force the quarterback situation right now. You have Trubisky for two years. 
if you force like grab Malik Willis or you grab someone just to grab them, you next year like the draft of quarterbacks looks a lot more like it's gonna have a lot more potential. So like, why this year would you like do that? Why not let Mitch play a year, see how Mitch does? Then like, if the Mitch experiment don't work, okay, we got Mitch for two years, so let's bring someone in this year. He can work. No, I agree. I agree, hundred percent. I would like to see them uh, uh, address the defensive line. Yeah, maybe even you know inside linebacker. You know, like uh, Devin Bush looks good right now. Like he, yeah, I'm telling. Do you see that workout video? That's what I look like down at the strip district. <laughs> That was fucking pathetic. He was running through cones, looked all fat. He looked like shit. Well, I mean, I don't know. He, you need you need a, a complimentary guy because he he wasn't he wasn't it last year. That is, yeah, that well, yeah, we, yeah, we got that inside linebacker from Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah. He, and he oh yeah oh yeah yeah uh, what's his yeah. Schobert uh, yeah. Jack. No no no. Oh, yeah. Miles Jack. Miles, Miles Jack. Jack. Yeah. yeah yeah. Schobert wasn't it either. I mean, I think I think McShay's job is to just drum up. Stories draft right. week, so especially this whole week, everybody's yeah, making up nonsense. If touchdown Kenny's there, do you grab touchdown Kenny? You That's think my, absolutely? That's my opinion. You don't let touchdown Kenny get out of time with them you little tiny him. hands, with them care, little baby dude. hands. It's Joe Burrow got the same size hands. Yeah, I think you grab touchdown. Joe Burrow got swag though. <laughs> so does touchdown Kenny. Well, that's uh, debatable. We'll see what happens. It'll be interesting. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Najee Harris goes to Greenfield School Elementary and donates. Forty-four thousand for the school for football program. That's awesome. That that's I mean that's unbelievable. I don't know exactly what had it brought them to Greenfield Elementary. Good for them. They have a so, football program there. So it, it, it's to, it's forty-four k. Uh, the the announcement at the donation was down at Greenfield School. They had some drills put out and shit like that for like all the kids there. It's gonna be spread out throughout the P- Pittsburgh Public Schools oh, nice. for the football program. Yeah, forty-four. I mean, if you gave Greenfield School football part, program just forty-four grand. That's a lot of shit. That's They'd like, be bringing dudes in. They'd be like yeah. scouting yeah, motherfuckers. Like, I'll go down and Third play. Third graders. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. I still get a birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> yeah, I played a little. I was a little too old to play midget football one time, folks. I had uh, I went under the alias of David Trunzo. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were all in the sudden like, Trunzo. That's great, though. Najee, I mean, literally, Najee does. It's almost like he does all the right moves. You know what I mean? Like I, I just love nausea. Off the field. What a, what a, <laughs> what a flick! All the right moves is. Yeah. Old Tom Cruise running back, yep. fucking uh, coach. Wow, that's an old coach. One, oh, dude, I love that's, that. Flick. I love eighties movies. Yeah. Oh, who doesn't? Unbelievable flick. A young Tom Cruise will do it for me. <laughs> Sticking to football, Floyd Mayweather. This is this has been out for a little bit. So Mayweather is like partnered up with AB. <laughs> yeah. So I don't. Two he's, more he's ones. Like, he's like <laughs> acting as his agent. So. He was in an interview. I'm not exactly sure what, what, who he's interviewing. It went viral. And he said any they will give any NFL team $20 million at the beginning of the year. They take A.B. in training camp. A.B. plays for them the whole season, performs, does well. If he doesn't act up, they get the $20 million back, and then the NFL team gives them another twenty on top of that. So you literally have Floyd Mayweather – Acting as AB's agent, it's he's not. Like, he's, he's like his. He's just like him. He's, he's not just, even his agent. Yeah, it's just like he's I'm, bankrolling. Let him. me make this sidewalk like deal on like in the NFL. Like I, he was dead serious, dude. Here's the thing: if they would do any kind of deal where Mayweather's involved, they're gonna literally be like, "Well, part of this is we're filming AB the whole time." So now he's getting twenty million dollars worth of content off AB going nuts for seventeen, eighteen games. Now it is. And he's going to make his money regardless. And from what I hear about dealing with Floyd Mayweather, he doesn't pay you anyway. Yeah. So, like, you know what I mean? If you want to take on, I would make sure I got paid in full up front if I did that deal. Because I heard a lot of stories about he don't pay. Well, that's what that day Floyd was like, we'll give you $20 million, And then if he goes through the whole season, give us our 20 back. And then A.B. makes $20 million. Who the fuck wants to pay A.B. $20 million? For one he can't year. Even, he's not even getting invited to do a camp. Now you're just eating $20 million? Are you yeah. nuts? Yep. It's he was a, last time I seen him. He was then shirtless the on same, the field. The same week, well, dude, he was shirtless again. The same week that Mayweather's coming out with this, trying to like pump up AB. AB's at like it looks like some ran- it looked like he was at Edinburgh. <laughs> he was at like some college, and up on like this weird <laughs> stage with like these overalls on, taking his overalls off and like performing his rap jam, and like nobody gave a fuck. <laughs> He, there was probably like a hundred people there because it was like literally like it was it was a college party. It looked yeah. like. Edinburgh, and like they were like they were staring at him, 
Like, what the fuck's going? Why is AB in Edinburgh <laughs> fucking <laughs> taking his clothes off? But All them young kids were like, who's like, this nobody, dude? Nobody was like, not even like fake hyping them up. They were literally, they had their phone out. They Nobody was moving. It was the It's one of the weirder videos on the internet. So at this same week, they're trying to, like, they, Floyd Mayweather's out there trying to convince you <laughs> AB's normal. AB decides go to Edinburgh, a state, some state school in PA, I'm thinking. Division three, for Yeah. Sure. IUP and take all of his clothes off. Uh, and, not a good and, and look. rap. It's, it's, it, dudes are not. I don't think he gets back. I don't know. Do you think he gets back on an NFL team? No. Not I, after think, just, I think it's over with. I think it might be he, over with. I'll tell you why. He, number one reason, Tom Brady is the face of the NFL and has been for 20 years. He fucked Tom Brady over so bad by leaving that team and left them high and dry. The NFL, black, he's black. He's black ball, 100%. Black ball. He's, he's like Colin it's, Kaepernick. It's dude. A, no one's picking him up, dude. It's a, well, see, like the Kaepernick shit, I don't think Kaepernick deserved, I don't think Kaepernick should be on a team now, but I don't think Kaepernick deserved the black ball. I, AB deserved this black ball if, that, if he gets black yeah. ball. He, I could see him with Johnny Manziel and T. But it doesn't matter. He's untouchable. And, no, no, I don't give a fuck. Who's untouchable? Uh, A B, Colin Cap. No one, no team is putting up with that oh, circus okay, that comes yeah. along with it. Like you know, as far as like, no, yeah, nobody juice, wants to do that. The juice ain't worth the squeeze anymore. Right. Absolutely. The thing with Colin, he's just gotten too old now. But the thing with A B, like he's, he's just too crazy he, now. He could still play, but it's like, look what you get. You get a guy. I mean, the last memory of him in the NFL was running. Is quitting on his team, running off the field. Take A B, put him in that playoff game again. They win that game. They they have a, you know what I mean they came back they could have won that game they needed like a thorough wide receiver so bad that game and he could catch everything I, I mean like fuck AB you really he's shit. just potatoes man yeah. yeah he's just nuts so we, the voicemails we've been it's been uh it's been interesting to say the <laughs> least so we blew up on DV this week and we we turned we had eight which is by which is like triple what we had so yeah. good job good job on the call wins. Uh, not all of them make much sense, but fuck it. <laughs> we're, you call, we're going to play them. Yep. So, Larry, cue them up. Hello, my name is Joseph from Pittsburgh, and I would like to say that your podcast is fantastic. Please keep up the good work. Thank you. Couldn't agree more, good. Joseph. Joseph, good stuff. Buddy. Joe, yeah. Joe, call thank it. you. Call every week. Yep. <laughs> Joseph, you nailed that one. Keep up. Keep it up, buddy. Yeah, I have a dilemma. I'm planning a birthday get-together with a certain male relative. I've suggested what I believe are normal activities. Golf, pool, casino. Hell, I'll even throw a fucking axe at a wall. (laughs) Problem is, this motherfucker wants to drag me to the middle of nowhere to look at toys and ball cards with a bunch of hillbillies. (laughs) My question for you guys is, should I ditch or take one for the team? I would so, fuck you. Not <laughs> I prefer to remain anonymous. Well, you're not. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. I, so I, that's 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 old Uncle Gene. That zebra. I cousin, knew it. cousin, yeah. cousin. Yeah. Well, yeah. I he mean, coached all of us in football. We all know Uncle Gene or I mean, cousin Gene. You're, you're, yeah. Whoever taught it seems like a cool dude. Whoever likes baseball courts. What about the ricochet <laughs> shot at axe throwing? Yeah. <laughs> well, because I threw out my party at last year. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. He came. So and, what? Cousin Gene's trying to do something, and you're, you're trying to drag him to the flea market? No, because like last year we went to the flea market. We had a good time. I mean, I had a good time. I thought, <laughs> Obviously, Gene did I, not. I, I guess Gene didn't. So I, I hit him up, Bishop. I'm like, hey, dude, I'm going to take off at Friday. You know, I'm, I'm, and like, I was going to see if he wanted to go up back up to, up to Rogers. He was like, yeah, dude, for sure I'll go. I, I ran into him Easter. He never said a peep of this. I didn't know he, he ate the flea market. <laughs> but there, there, I'm going to tell you something about the flea market. It is. There's some weird shit out there. There's one section where I, I really believe, are, like most of the people out there, aren't alive within 500 feet of the school. Because there's like <laughs> a ton of like little naked baby dolls. It's just freaking creepy. What? And then there's like buckets of mannequin hands. What? What part of the like is this? What county is this in? Rogers Flea Markets in Ohio. Oh, it's Ohio. Oh, psh, I could have guessed that. Yeah, so it's fucking the one part. My husband's like, dude, look at the baby dolls. The one baby doll was like as big as Larry. But it was a baby. <laughs> And it was just like naked. I'm like, this is so fucking weird. So, that's dude, a sex doll. And the guy was asking about it. He was like, what, what, what's Wait, that? did the baby, like, did the, 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 Jesus. Did the naked baby doll, like, did it have a body on it? Or did it have, like, a naked baby body? It had, like, a. That was a, a weird sentence. It, 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 it just had, like, <laughs> no. Was it was, a full size Barbie? Yeah, was it a Barbie? <laughs> 
Was it a baby doll with titties? No. Okay. No, no it was just, you know, but it was still, it looked like a baby. It was giant. It was wooden, but it was fucking creepy. It was wooden? That's fucking terrifying. Yeah, and then the the creepier thing was, right, the dude had a bucket. I'm, I'm, I'm describing this wrong, not a bucket. A big fucking container. He had of, a bushel full uh, of, of hands. Of, of, of hands. <laughs> Women's mannequin hands. So I'm like, those were probably hot commodities. You dude. are dude. Were they all like this? Do they all have their hand no, laid to jack like, off? No, it was like straight and like and the dude like my cousin asked like, what are you those for? He's like, oh, they're for like modeling rings and stuff. But like, why do you have a whole container full of them? And like, dudes were coming up, and I seen a dude <laughs> like he was like, you got the left and the right, or they stole left. He's like, I, I only got left this time. I'm like, what the fuck is going like, on? Where did you steal these from? So I can understand why your cousin want to, doesn't want to go back. Yeah, so I might have to work on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I let's go golfing or something. Dude. Okay. <laughs> uh, He's up for anything but that. Yeah, I got a gear grinder. Whenever you go to the dispensary on a beautiful Saturday afternoon, and you got to stand in line behind Jeffrey, who doesn't realize that's his name until the third time, then directly following that Christina, who's standing there in her cum stained yoga pants, <laughs> takes her two times to realize her name, and all you can do is look him up and down and say, get it together, liberals. <laughs> What? <laughs> oh boy! Like you said, we uh, said call it and say anything. Yeah, I mean, if that's grinding your gears, that's great. I don't know what you want us to do about it. Uh, yeah, I don't own a dispensary. I have no control over that. But yeah, I mean, I would imagine it was probably pretty crowded that day. I mean, come stain pants. That's never a good look. Never. They, she was. She she didn't have an iced coffee. You're saying it was definitely come. <laughs> dude, I, I think our Pittsburgh accents are heavy until like we get these voicemails, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Dude. Yeah. But we'll, we'll look into that for you. Yeah, we'll take care of it. Yeah, I mean, come stand yoga pants. There's dry cleaners out there. We can figure that out for hey, you. Let's see we got next late. Hey, what's going on, babe? Uh, I'm a Schuster, Donna Rumble. I'm remaining <laughs> on this. Um, dude, you feel like I'm like weird, like flashing lights out here and stuff. It's not a run. I mean, I don't know, like, I'm not like, trying to sound like a fucking weird or them, but you know, I swear to God, it's like alien. And like no one's seen no one's seen Johnny Moore for like three weeks, so like I don't know. Let's get on all these aliens down to run, babe. <laughs> <laughs> so I've seen the same aliens down to run. I go. So we got an alien sighting down the run. <laughs> so, so, dude. So like I mean, this is good shit. I mean, I mean if there's an alien like, sighting down the run. We want to know about it. Yeah, like this is the kind of calls. Johnny really, Marbs is MIA. Johnny yeah, Marbs. Someone find missing. Johnny Marbs. He's been abducted and taken back to the motherland. <laughs> Dude, uh, the run's a perfect spot for the aliens. It's nice and with, flat. They can the land right yeah. on the soccer field. There's a water source there. There's, there's <laughs> I mean, that's a I, that makes sense. I would like to get the you know the unclassified people on it. The one on the do the History Channel come down the run, do some run some tests, see if maybe there's some like you know what I mean. Get What's Giorgio Sukalos Fiel, in here. Field signs like you know where the landing. There's mazes, Schuster's down there, fucking. This is something we could sink our teeth into. Yeah. If there's a, if there's aliens down the run, like we want to know about it, so we'll take a look into that for sure. Keep an eye on that, Schuster. Yeah. Keep keep, <laughs> keep reporting. <laughs> <laughs> This is only a test. <laughs> what the fuck? Actually, no. This is a big warning from an anonymous caller. Johnny Marbs and Jason Davis have been going around, running around butt naked, kissing themselves and holding hands. I don't know what they're doing. Watch your children. Marbs and Davis wanted... Aliens have abducted them. <laughs> I have no clue what they are doing. Please watch your kids. <laughs> so we got an immediate update. That, that's that, good. That, that's that's, hey, that's good fucking reporting there. Dude, what the fuck? I mean, it was opening day at the GBA. So the uh, home, okay. So that, well, that was phone calls from the home run champ of all time, Dave Schuster. <laughs> <laughs> opening day at the GBA is the little league, the little league at uh, Hammer Field. At Hammer Field, and they, if you're over the age of thirty, you drink forty two beers that day. <laughs> at least, um, Dave might have doubled down. He did someone else's for him. Uh, really well put, Dave. Um, I could tell you put a lot of thought into that call, and you know you tried your best to explain it. Uh, came up short. <laughs> um, I still have no idea what's going on with Davis and Johnny Morbs, but I'm pretty sure you're going to check in with us next week and you're going to have another update 
Or at least I'm going to pray you do. Yeah, Dude, God, God willing. That opening noise, like, I don't know what the fuck that was. That was terrifying. I thought it was Darth Vader for a second. It was the yeah. of the emergency broadcast. <laughs> Is that what he was trying to pull yeah, off there? Yeah, yeah. Wow. He was like. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, next one. Yeah, this voicemail is for Mike Zebert. This is Jesse Boylan from down in Orange County, California. And I just want to know, why aren't you guys talking about Donnie Iris anymore? He's a national he was a national hero. Fuck he, Donnie Iris. I mean, he sang the national anthem at the Stoller game in that. And then afterwards, we went to Pants and that. And then we went to Hermione Brothers and had a big Van Roth and Burger sandwich. Now we need to get talking about Donnie Iris. I want to hear it. Fuck Donny Iris. Donny Iris don't talk about us. I never heard Donny Iris mentioned one time Greenfield's finest podcast. Donny Iris could suck our dicks. Wow, that was... I see how you feel about Donny Iris, Jack. Donnie You're not a Iris. huge fan, huh? Yep. All right. Yeah. Money line. z I just wanted to compliment you guys. Way to stay humble and help out your friend Bill's little radio show. <laughs> that's on it for him. Really good of you guys. You crushed it. I'm sure that helped him out a lot. Yeah, anytime we can help Bill Crawford out up, <laughs> up on DVE, get to you know get the show recognized. <laughs> if you guys aren't familiar, Bill Crawford he does a little morning show on DVE. <laughs> we go hopped on there. We're like, hey man, we'll, we'll give you a shout out. <laughs> so that's that's yeah. We appreciate you. Got to bring each other up. Yeah, dude, you know what uh, I mean, it's a team effort. Bill Bridges. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to say good job on the voicemails this week. They're there. Thanks you know for the voice. Mean? Yeah. Just thanks for the voicemails. Yeah, thanks that? for the voicemails. Uh, <laughs> Let's keep them I, up. I think we're going in the right direction here. So, yeah, keep them coming. All right, let's take a little break. All right, everybody, we'll take a quick commercial break. We'll come back with more Greenfield Smash Podcast. Hi, if you're living down the south side inside of a cardboard box and your dog's chewing on your leg and you probably got 73 cents in your McDonald's cup, you're looking for a place to live. Well, guess what? I got good news. Carlson & Associates is the place. They're specializing not just in residential, but also commercial, multifamily investment, historic buildings, and everything else. So get that cardboard box, fold it up, get to the closest pay phone, and make a call. Call 412-431-1718 to schedule an appointment. Carlson Associate walk down to your cardboard box and show you other boxes all around the south side. Have a great day, folks, and tell them Z-Bird sent you. Oh, yeah, brother. I just drove past your house, and it looks like your wall's falling down. And this is not good for business, because guess what? If that wall comes down, I'm climbing up that hill and banging your old lady. So yeah, every one of your neighbors thinks you're a giant piece of shit and you can't afford a new wall. Well, guess what? I got a phone number. Now you can. You better call Just Walls at 412-889-4401. Fully insured and build that wall before I come up here and I bang your old lady. Dig it! Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Z-Bird from Greenfield's Finest Podcast. Right now, if you're sitting in your house and you're going to go up to the bathroom and you're shitting inside a plastic bucket, you're probably in trouble. And if you go into your bedroom and there's buzzards flying in because you ain't got no fucking windows, you're in real trouble. Well, guess what? I got good news. Bath Factory and Window, 412-951-3939. They handle all your bathroom and window repairs. They've been in business for over 100 years, and their great-great-grandfather came over on the Mayflower, and he installed the first shitter in the White House. So you can trust Bath Factory and Window at 412-951-3939. Stop shitting on a bucket and getting eaten by buzzards. Hey, what's going on, everyone? I just drove by your house. You got a giant hole in the shot. What's that for? So you can stick your dick in it, and your old lady can shuck it. You're better than that, man. Get that hole patched up. Why don't you call SNL Remodeling, LLC? They do roofing, siding, gutters, dime slots, soffit, face. And they'll fix that hole so your wife puts shock in everyone's dick. 412-628-9717. And tell them Z-Bird sent you. We're sick of seeing your wife shocking all that cock. Hey, if you're looking for a fun night out in the south side and you don't want to get punched in the face, check out Finn McCool's at 1501 Carson Street. Go there, have a good time, and don't get punched in the face. Finn McCool's, 1501 Carson Street. And tell them Z-Bird sent you. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I don't know if you've ever had a problem like me, but if you've ever stuck your dick in the light socket, you're probably going to need an electrician. Well, good thing Greenfield Finest Podcast has Plug Electric as our official electricians of the Greenfield Finest Podcast. If you're looking for a good electrician, contact Plug Electric. 
Ask for Vance Hall. Phone number 412-298-6770. That's 412-298-6770. And stop sticking your dick in the light sock. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Greenfield Smash Podcast. We're about to jump into Corn Dick of the Week. Moneyline, who be corn dicking? Ben Simmons, the corniest corn dick of them all. <laughs> this dude is such a diva weirdo. He's a pussy. He's a soft pussy. He's getting crushed. It's one thing when you get crushed by fans and people in the media and shit like that, but when the players are, like, calling you soft and the players don't want anything to do with them. So Ben Simmons was supposed to come back for the playoffs and play. He got traded from Philly to Brooklyn. Uh, James Harden went to Philly. It wasn't working. It, it seemed like it was a, it was going to work out. You know, everybody yeah. was going to get out of places they, were gonna get, they didn't want to be. Simmons goes, and he's just not playing. He's going on the sidelines. He's sitting there in, like, some pink lokes. He looks like such a bitch. Uh, and pretty much the whole league hates him, man. It's 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 such a weird story. I don't even know like if he's hurt, if it's mental health. Like he's just he's just not playing, I and mean, it's 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 insane. The the Nets just got swept. The, he so, didn't play. He he hasn't he hasn't he didn't play a minute for the Nets. Let me ask you this because I don't follow basketball too much. Did is did Harden play for the Sixers? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. The Sixers are in the playoffs. So the Harden went over there, stepped in doing his thing. Ben Simmons, who was a pretty good player, 76, goes to the Nets and literally doesn't play at all. Doesn't play at all. Is that like the A-B syndrome or something? Like, is he a he's, narcissist and he's being a crybaby or what? I Yeah, I think he's a major – someone, like, I've seen on uh, Twitter, they were saying, like, go watch his college documentary. He's such a diva. He's all about Back him. Back then, he's yeah. all about him. So, I, I, this dude – he that might can be, kill he might you, be, dude. That'll yeah, he might be playing career, himself bro. out of the league, man. Right. He really is. People, people are not feeling Barkley and fucking Shaq are crushing him. I heard Mayweather, Mayweather's going to start representing him. Yeah, he, I could like if 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 Ben Simmons hop, hops in the Mayweather AB camp, uh, he's cuckoo. Well, I wouldn't even be surprised at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a TikToker, that, you know, TikTok full of golfers that like they they show every one of their shots and like I, I watch a, a lot of it. So it cu- pumps up on my al- algorithm. This one TikToker, he's decent. He's a good golfer. He's playing all of his shots, and then he has his girlfriend who rides al- rides along in the cart with him. Uh, they guess the yardages, and then she does all the putts. How, so how this, are... this dude is just, like, playing golf with his lady while she drives around, and then he co- she comes and putts. Like, dude, this, you, they are we're playing such a dangerous game by, like, make, you cannot make it normal – that girlfriends yeah. come golf with you <laughs> and sit in the cart. If, if your girlfriend wants it plays golf and she wants to come, that's one thing. I'm not doing it, but whatever. But if like if girlfriends starting to think like, hey, like Rob brought his girlfriend golfing, like why can't I go? It, this is a can of worms. It's a slippery slope. They're gonna ruin and they're golf. Gonna, they're gonna ruin golf, <laughs> and that's what I'm worried. They're gonna fucking ruin golf. You're dude. Sa- you're saying, and it makes perfect sense. Like he's setting a precedent. Especially with a younger audience of like, look how fun it is to bring your girlfriend. Because like your girlfriend, if she never golfed, she can still always putt. And now more girlfriends are going to want to do this. Like, come on, let's go golfing. I'll putt all your balls in. And now you got guys day out golfing turns into it, it's just a double day. I'm pretty sure this Dude. guy's got his balls putted in before if uh, he bring his girlfriend golfing I've, with him. I and- played golf four or five times this year. Two of those times, there's been a girlfriend in the cart. Not with, with like, you, uh, not with people I've been with. Okay. One time they were playing behind us, and then that time in uh, California, the dude we played with a girl, and she didn't say a word the whole entire time. Yeah, this, she just I don't know it. why <laughs> a girl would fucking want to go and watch her boyfriend play golf. Girls, they want to keep an eye on their boyfriend. I get that, I guess, but like, dude, you have to have some trust. Like, get his locations. We have to you know, watch that to come around and just drive around. It just makes me uncomfortable. Which is, it's it's a president You're we don't want to set. Else's day. And we're gonna yeah, and like the younger generation is gonna have to bring their girl, their girlfriends fucking golfing, and that's that sucks. Yeah, it sucks. For it's you a guys. downfall <laughs> golf. You're calling it right now, yeah, Jack. I, I, it seriously is. It's a it's a it's a problem. Uh, Yankee fans, piece of shit goomba. Yankee <laughs> fans, heckling Cleveland outf- outfielder Miles Straw. Straw hops up on the fence. Climbs the fence, getting this Yankee. He gets in this Yankee fan's face, trying to get him to punch him. The dude, the, the Yankee fan's a pussy. Won't do anything. It was, it was a, it, it was, was a major he, move. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody. I, I, I love, you know, what I mean, the the uh, 
Malice at the Palace. I love to see fucking athletes go in the stands. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and, like, that fan, he could have fucked him up from there because if he hits him, he's about he's eight. Falling he's backwards, falling backwards, yeah. Down. Yeah, not yeah. like uh, – that dude's probably it's, – it's beating that fan's ass most likely. But Not that in that dude, situation. Not in that situation right. at he's all. He's on the warning track. <laughs> So that dude had a chance to fuck him up, and he didn't. He's talking all what, that shit. What was he doing? I, I didn't see. What he was, was just. He, I, just I, I, there was normal heckling. I think. Uh, he, so I it wasn't. Know, I don't think crazy. he threw anything. But yeah, it just seemed like normal heckling, and like there was uh, all three outfielders were actually like in left field. It was like, in between innings, and like dude, it, it got heated. It was. It was definitely uh, something to see. So but, he yeah, called he, everybody out, and did, he, he crawled up that wall and punked like four of these fucking dudes. And they good for shit. him. Good for him. Yeah, the corn dicks are the Yankees fans, obviously. And yeah, no doy. Uh, Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield got a statue in Oklahoma this weekend. They did old Baker dirty, man. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Dude, they pushed his wig all the way <laughs> back. They gave him a fucked up ass receding hairline, which Baker does not have. Baker, great, great head Baker head, has great a great head. head of hair. Don't you think, like, if you're getting a statue built, like you have to okay that, or like they that's have to, what I was gonna say. That, you got to give it like the final thumbs up would, approval. You on would it, right? think. You would think, right? Yeah, I agree with what you're saying, but I think it's almost like one of those situations where you're so honored that they're building this statue that you just kind of come for the unveiling and that's your gift. But that's and, embarrassing and, you the rest of your life. Yeah. yeah. Beyond. I mean, but, yeah. Yeah, it, it was just, yeah, the story isn't Baker Mayfield got a statue. It's, it's Baker been, Mayfield got a statue with a fucked up ass hairline. Right. Yeah, because if he would have got a nice statue, no one would have brought it up. It would have been like a little blurb, a sideline to history. But. If the story gets out that Baker is like sends his bust back or like you know what I mean like well, hey then he's a big huge then, then, cry like, baby. yeah Baker's a piece of shit and like right. he's such a crybaby because he, he has a fucked up hairline but I, I'd be I don't that dude I, I, yeah statues yeah. forever dude <laughs> I, or I mean not anymore they're not but like they used, <laughs> they used to be I don't know I think I'm sending that back like dude you gotta I, like, I would come me in some hair dude. Like I have it. If it's one thing if I, it's one thing if I have a fucked up hairline. You don't fuck with dudes about their hairline. Listen, dude. if they gave you one shot, like, oh, you want this statue that looks like you, thirty five years from now. Yeah, I, I'd be like, just give me a plaque. <laughs> just write my name on it. I don't even want the fucking statue. Give me a plaque. No, I'm gonna fucked up. It. Yeah, if I don't have a fucked up hairline, don't put a fucked up hairline. Yeah, on. you gave me a seven head, dude. I'm good, dude. I'll take a plaque. Uh, we got a 15 year old kid who gets a brand new car for his birthday, and he drove it right through the front of his house the second he got in it. That's Good for him. It was like a brand. It wasn't like it was a brand new car, dude. So I yeah. mean, you're getting a 15 year old a brand new car. That's insane. Yeah, that's ridiculous in itself. But he ran it through what mom and dad's right, fucking yeah. living room. They're like, oh look, here. it was the bow was still on, and this motherfucker oh, put it right good. through the front of the house. Good. I, I hope mean, they learned their lesson. I mean, it, that's like the thing. Like, did they never take him to drive before? Like, apparently not. <laughs> Well, he's 15. Like, what, R means why, why is a 15 year old getting a new well, car? Well, you're right about that. But, like, some states, I think you can get your permit even when you're 15, can't you? And then you could drive. Yeah, like, but. But, but, like, did, why, you, would you really just let him get in the car and, like, have never. First time, Listen, brand new that, car? That's right. a parent's flex. That had nothing to do with the kid or being proud of him yeah. for being 15. That's like, look, we just got, he's 15, but we got him a car anyway. You're right. <laughs> you know what? Shoy uh, uh, nailed that. that yeah, that's a parents, yeah, the parents are the corn dick. Yeah, right. obviously. Yep, that's what they, that was a good point. I wasn't looking at it from that point, but that was a parent look at me moment. Yeah, like, look, oh, my God, of course we got Bradley a fucking car at 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, for sure. Sure, you know, but it was like a Honda Sonata or some shit too. It's still a brand new. It was Jack. A how many brand new cars your parents bought you? None. Zero. Dad, same, same here, pal. We, yeah. we, didn't even, <laughs> we didn't even have one fucking car. <laughs> exactly. Or, or cable or fucking food. <laughs> I wish I had this kid's fucking parents. I'd have drove that car right through the kitchen. I would, yeah, I drove right down the store, got something to eat. <laughs> to fuck up your brand new whip with a bow still on it, though. That's that's uh, that's it's impressive. priceless, dude. Yeah. That's that's like uh, karma, you know. Uh, we have a Florida bride drugged wedding guests without their consent. So we had a Florida bride um, have a weed infused dinner. Didn't tell any of her guests that the weed or that the dinner was to be infused with weed, and she had about half her guests go to the hospital to be kept, uh, to get checked out because they were pretty much they were losing their marbles because they just ate all this weed food yeah. and didn't know it. You, I got you two, can't root for your wedding. Guests. I got two problems with that, dude. First of all. Edibles ain't cheap. Like, throwing all that weed into that food 
ain't cheap. Second of all, you can't dose motherfuckers without them knowing they're getting high tonight. Gotta let them know. And you, I mean, here's the thing. Like, check the box with the salmon or the steak, like, high or not high. You, you, like, you got old people there, you got kids there, you got maybe people in recovery there. Right. I mean, like, you really just threw it all out there. Yeah, Yeah, and just fucking fuck people up. And, like, dude, not everyone reacts. Weed is so strong anymore. Like, if you, like, someone, like, if someone drugged me with weed, I'd lose my fucking mind, dude. Yeah, I if you don't a- know, you, yeah, if you don't know you're on it, you, you're gonna you're gonna lose your marbles. We went to Vegas one time, back in the day, and our one boy drank all fucking night. And he before he went to sleep, he ate like a a Molly pill, and like he ended up like passing out. Probably like you eat those. Uh, well, he took. <laughs> that yeah, was he, a joke. He, took, uh, he ended up passing out pretty much in the very beginning of a Molly pill because he was so drunk. So he wakes up the next day and he's being all weird. He comes downstairs and he's fucking, he's, man, I feel crazy, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, dude, yeah, you're still on ecstasy. And he was like, when did I take ecstasy? I was like, like three hours ago. He's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> he was about to go check himself in because he was uh, he, he was so fucked up. He forgot he took the molly. Yeah, that'll that, do it. That'll for do sure. It, so I mean, if you don't know you're gonna be on a drug and you have the effects of a drug, you're gonna be weirded the fuck out and you're gonna go to the hospital. Right. Especially yeah. an edible. Like no one thinks that they're. Well, this is like weed stuff. Chicken is, yeah, is laced right, with it. You know right. what I mean? This is weed infused butter. That, and that's shit what like I mean. That. So like, I've given people edibles and they knew what they were taking and they're like. You know, cold compresses on the forehead, like they need a timeout and everything. <laughs> so imagine doing that to like grandma. Yeah, you, yeah, you can't, you can't roof. You're an you. animal. Don't I ro- think they both uh, got arrested for that. Don't roof yeah. your grandma. The, the yeah, bride in the in the caterer. Yeah, the, they definitely they got jammed up. Rudy Giuliani sings "Bad to the Bone" on the mat. Was that the Mass Singer or some yeah, shit? Yeah, I watched. We that. we talked about this story a while ago when it happened, and King John. Uh, the dude from uh, Kim Jong Un. No, no, not Un. <laughs> Kim Jong. The dude from uh, the Hangover. Yeah. The little the, the Asian with the, the Asian doctor with the baby dick. That's not Kim Jong Un. That's not. I didn't. No one said Un. Oh, I thought you yeah, said that. Yeah, no, Kim Jong. Uh, Ken Jong. But he walked off the stage when Ru- Rudy was singing "Bad to the Bone." <laughs> Rudy Giuliani, dude, who is like, who's in charge of him, man? <laughs> who gave him lace chicken stuffed chickens? He, <laughs> look, he like, like popped out of a box in like a clown suit. Was, he didn't even have a mask on. I don't know what, he, to- uh, dude. I watched that from beginning to. I watched both performances, and the first time when I heard him sing something, I'm like, "This guy's awful." He's getting voted off tonight. And then when he did, when he Revealed himself. It was Rudy Giuliani. There was claps. There was booze. There was you know people because of the turmoil with the po- politics and that. But like, here's my thing: you're a professional, Ken. Let it go. Yeah, you, walk, yeah. You, walking off is like, such like, a like, weird like, move. Like he's making himself look like a fucking idiot more than anyone else could. Yeah, right you should have capitalized. Make on a good it. joke. Make exactly. A good, instead, you walk off stage. And people were talking about that. No, we need to focus on Rudy Giuliani singing and looking like a complete psychopath. Dude, going from America's mayor to fucking dancing on a stage. Dude, to Rudy G. Did you the heart? Did you hear it? No, it's dude, crazy. he's. It was the most insane version of. He's missing all the beats too, like all like the. He was like, "Bye to the bone." Yeah, because he's <laughs> about to die. <laughs> yeah, but is this let him die and la- they Rudy G. Needs to get in camp with fucking Mayweather and AB. Dude. <laughs> yeah, sign. Sign, sign Rudy right yeah. now. He's like, I'll be your legal counsel, guys. Yep. <laughs> Meet up with Kanye and really have a day. Film that. Oh, dude, that was bad. But he did himself enough wrong. Ken didn't need to walk off to make it about him. That was crap. That shit. That's Hollywood for you. You know, everything's about. No one can just let things be. Everything has to be. About Everybody's him. affected and yeah. offended by everything. Yep. Yeah. So we have a house, uh, a, a house on a golf course is beginning destroyed with golf balls. They sued the country club where their house is on, and they got $5 million for it. That's nuts. It's nuts, but they were holding a bin of golf balls. It had to be a couple thousand golf balls in that fucking bin. You don't think dudes are getting hammered aiming at that motherfucker? Well, if they they know, especially because if you're you're a member of the country club, you know they have a problem with them, and it's going to get around. So, yeah, people are definitely chucking. Yeah, 100 bucks who breaks a window. Right, but- you bought a house on a golf course, still. You, there should be some kind of like liability, though. Like you know where you like you drive through Shenley Park Golf Course, and it says you get your heart like right there. Drive through at your own risk. Your car gets a window broken. That's your shit sandwich. My, my girlfriend's parents live on up at Westwood, and and like there's a thing, and like they get 
golf balls occasionally will come through and stuff like that. And, you know, because, like, especially up there, because, like, you're not playing with the PGA Tour and uh, balls are, and, I mean, that's what you. It's risk, hazard, it's what, dude. It's what you risk, signed up for, yeah, man. it's a risky run. But, like, they're, it's funny, like, after, like, the, a month. It was so many golf balls. Dude, it was, like, thousands of golf. Like, so, after a month up at Westwood, they, they'll come and it'll be a small bucket of balls they'll give me. And then, like, dude, this literally, literally was, like, a big, giant container that people put. You know, if you go to, like, a cook, like a cookout, and there's the ice and pot. With the drinks in it. Yeah, it was one of those. Like, the, with, the, with yeah. the rope fucking handles with and the shit. Rope filled with fucking golf. So, people, <laughs> by far, were intentionally just You have to up. be. Five mil, though, you could hit my golf, hit my house as many golf balls as you want. Hit me. Absolutely. Right. Oh, yeah. Man. Hit me right. My, I hope you chip a tooth. Hit me, baby, one more time. Jumping right. over to brother in arms. Mike Tyson tees off on dude on flight. Uh, so everybody's seen this video. This went viral almost a week ago at this point. Yeah. Dude was extremely hammered, kept fucking with Tyson, kept fucking with Tyson. Tyson finally turns around and hit him with a fucking three-piece. And he fucked the dude up. Not as bad as I thought he was. Dude, that had to be more than a three piece, dude. He he hit uh, him a few times. Dude was bleeding his face away. Well, like, it's Mike Tyson. Right. It oh, was quick. Yeah. He was like it, it Tyson was, was so like Tyson was that'd like That'd be a five seven piece with barbecue sauce. At Tyson least. was on his knees and he turned around and like the dude was like leaning up and Tyson just hit him like with a quick flare. He was like three or four punches. Yeah. He fucked him up pretty good. He didn't yeah. knock him out. You could tell I mean he was holding back too, yeah. and he was also on his knees. This kid deserved it appeared he deserved every bit of it. hundred percent. Yeah, one thing about it, like like at least for that kid, he didn't try to press charges and like thank God, because you you look like a fucking asshole. And like Jack, like you were saying, he definitely held back in that. But good for Mike Tyson, like for holding back. But at least showing like, hey, we still live in a world if you fuck with me, I'm gonna punch you in the face. What sucks is this kid's gonna sue him and this kid's gonna get a he's gonna get a million bucks. Well, he didn't no, press this charges. dude's like a I, th- I, th- I read he got Yeah he, he was pressing charges No I, I read, no no I, I read, read he's he wasn't. not pressing charges 100% oh, I heard yeah. he dropped everything Dude so he's like a lifelong Like His name's Piece like Melvin shit. Thurgood the third Or some shit Like he's like Probably like some rich dude From Florida That like He's been in and out of uh, trouble yeah, I heard, yeah, for all I heard, kind of dumb shit. his rap sheet like, was pretty lengthy. But it's all nonsense shit. Like it's, it's drunk l- l- lunatic yeah. shit. Yeah, it's like daddy gave me some money type of shit. Not, he, like, like, he got punched criminal. in his, He got punched and like he didn't seem too upset he got punched. See, like I, I read he, he he lawyered up. So I just He may have lawyered up, but he didn't press criminal charges. I know that for I, sure. I know for sure when given the opportunity. He did not want to go forward with criminal charges. Right, but civil yes. civil suit, that's where the money's at. But I, and I get that, but I still think that Mike Tyson, like, looking at this case, his kid's past, I think you're, they're going to see, like, hey, he was antagonized. Uh, this He's was, looking for a payday. You, you're, you're fucking with Mike Tyson. You know what I mean? A professional fighter. That's what you get. I, I, don't, I hope to God the kid don't get a fucking dime. Me you're going to see so many people... Like torturing celebrities. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, they they you act out and oh, uh, hit me, hit me, and then I'm gonna sue you. Speaking of testimonies, old Johnny Depp's going through it, Z-Bird. Uh, dude, my girl. So shout out to my girlfriend Addie. She is so team Johnny on this. I was so unaware of like everything was going on, but she is like informed me on everything. I I like just thought like Johnny Depp was whacked out of his mind. He like lost his marbles, but like apparently. Amber Heard is like a very abusive woman and like she was saying like like he never came forward with any of this abuse because no one would believe him. She was like taunting him and shit. Like no one's gonna like no one's gonna believe you what you were the abuser. She shit in his bed. She shit in his bed. That's uh, where the line gotta be drawn. Right. She like she attacked him several times. Like, you know what I mean? Just like by her and then when she came out and said that he attacked her when he didn't, like he was the one beating her up, it cost him they don't even can't put a number on it because the new Pirates of the Caribbean never got released. It was like dangling, as they call it in the industry. Dude, she could be on the hook for. I mean, right now he's suing her for fifty million. She's trying to counter sue, but she literally could end up owing him fifty million, which I you know it could be. That's getting off light. Yeah, she. I mean, she ain't gonna pay him that. That's what sucks about that. Right. And like, dude, yeah, Depp has like points on the back end with Pir- Pirates of the Caribbean. He knew it was gonna be a hit. He is. What's what's his character's name in that fucking in Jack all? Sparrow? Jack Sparrow, yeah. dude. He is Jack Sparrow. Yeah. He's he's he's, t- he's took one too many mushrooms. He thinks he's <laughs> Jack Sparrow. Him on like him on the stand, the way he's <laughs> answering these questions. Are, uh, it's unbelievable. He's fucking with this lawyer so bad. Well, no, dude, dude. that lawyer he's is like cool. an amateur, dude. He's as cool he's as a cucumber, man. Him. 
Well, he's trying to. Yeah, he's trying to. Like, he thinks, but that lawyer's like. He thinks he's like. He thinks he's about to hammer Depp with something, and Depp just like no reaction, so nonchalantly. He's like, "Well, it's five o'clock somewhere," and just like it's like every line after that. He just he just this kid doesn't. Yeah, this guy could, doesn't know what to do. He has great. He he has great timing for his comments. Great timing. I he's th- he's just not stressed. Usually, when you see someone on like the stand, they're like they're stressed out. Like in in reality, he's rich, dude. You know right. what I mean? He, this so he's just uh, he looks like he he might be on some mushrooms because he is so <laughs> laid back and so cool, dude. Putting he, up with this broad for all them years, he got to be on something, dude. I mean, you shit in your bed, man. Yeah, shit in the bed is bad. I mean, I one of the funny texts you could shit in the bed. It got to be on accident. One of the funnier texts is that he said. I guess. personally shit. I mean, I guess. They, they were going back and forth, and he says, uh, I want to use your throat for something, but it's uh, not violent. Yeah. And I'm just like, dude, he's the best, dude. Yeah, well. He's, he's a, a pirate. Yeah. That's how pirates act. <laughs> <laughs> or you walk. You can't tell. He's dressed like a pirate in the courtroom. Yeah. yeah he, you he can't tell like, that, dude. He's not he's a pirate. Like the poet, he's, he's like a, the poet sleeves. He's a pirate tan all the time, dude. Yeah. He's all rummed up. He's a fucking pirate. He's definitely shivering some timbers. Dude. No doubt. <laughs> this is one of the better videos I've seen on the internet ever. So these two kids are going around knocking on doors, shovel, asking to shovel driveways. Uh, the ring camera picks it up. They ask the lady. They're, 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 like, they're like talking to each other. And like, these people are rich, dude. They don't care about $20. Like, dude, we're going to be rich. They're going to say, yeah. And then the lady comes. They knock on the door. The lady comes out like, hey, can we shovel your uh, driveway for 20 bucks?" And she was like, yeah. And they like, dude, they get so excited. <laughs> and they're like, wait, 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 10 apiece? And then she, they're like, she's like, yeah, let me go get you the 20 bucks. I'll give you t- I'll give you 10 a piece. And she goes inside and like, yeah, <laughs> we're rich. And then like, as like they pay her, they're walking. He's like, dude, let's do a really good job so everybody else knows we do. She's going to tell everybody. Then everyone's going to give us $20, and we're going to be richer than everybody else. <laughs> and it was just so pure. How yeah. old are these kids? They were probably like 8, 9, 10. Yeah. You know, there was just, uh, I've there been was there. Michael, I know you've yeah. been there, dude. And you shovel the snow. You feel like a million bucks. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's a, it's a great video. These two kids were so pumped I, to make tr- make twenty bucks. I I love the fact that kids are pumped to still make a twenty spot. I remember back in the day, like we all do, like what a good feeling it was when you shoveled snow all day. And I think you'd make like you know, make seventy, eighty, sixty bucks, bucks eighty bucks on a good a good day. It'd be like a hundred. You could buy some weed and get a pizza. Well, our I mean, big our well, big problem <laughs> was we would roll too deep. There would be like four or five of us going to shovel snow. And like we have to break that money up, yeah. So like that, that's kind of where we fucked up. But I mean, dude, making that money back in the day, yeah. Like get a pizza, you pay for your own pizza. I, maybe like go to the mall, fucking get some cards or some shit like that. There, that would, that's one of the better feelings you you get as a kid. It's yeah, called it, accomplishment, right? Well, having your own, <laughs> it was having your own money like that. I love the way them kids thought about that. Like, let's do a good job so we can do all the sidewalks. Good for them, and good for them people for paying it, not being. You know what I mean. Yeah, because I, mean, I honestly, you don't, I, I hate to be the old guy that says it, you don't see kids going and walking around shoveling snow anymore, but you really don't, dude. Right. Uh, NBA on TNT is <laughs> the best show on TV right yeah. now, dude. These guys should win a fucking Emmy. Yeah. They're unbelievable. Uh, NBA playoffs are on. Barkley is just out of his mind. He's like, he's trying to explain like how to get away from a defender. And he was like, hey, when he grab, he's like, when he grabs you like this, you know, you got to bear down, and then, like, dude, he it just sounds like he's he's Descri- describing having sex with a man. When and he slams, he's, he, he when slam he slams in. into you, <laughs> and then, dude, Shaq, they cut to Shaq, and Shaq is literally like belly laughing, trying not to like, <laughs> or, like trying to hide that he's laughing. And Barkley, Barkley knows what he did. He didn't do it on purpose, and he's just like perfect comedic timing. He's like, come on, <laughs> and dude, Kenny's fucking <laughs> laughing. Ah, there's a bunch of shit that happened this week, but that that was the funniest fucking shit. Kenny was trying to bust Shaq's balls about being late, and he like made it like a late joke. Shaq looked at him dead serious. He's like, "Try to be funny on TV one more time. I'm gonna put my hands on you. Pause. <laughs> put my paws." I yeah. love that. And I was like, "Dude, it, Shaq wasn't playing." No, it was dude. He, Shaq was. He's like, "You making a joke, Kenny? <laughs> you making a joke?" He's like, "Can't make a joke about me one more time. I'm gonna come over and put them paws on you." 
And like, dude, dude, dude it's like, what the fuck? Poor er- Ernie's trying to keep it all together, dude. <laughs> They're but the best comedic team. Barkley goes on this fucking crazy rant. Everybody listens to him. <laughs> it's Kenny's turn to talk. Barkley's like off camera, pulls out a solo cup, is, is mixing up a drink. And they're like, Chuck, what the fuck are you <laughs> doing? We're not on commercial break. I love Charles like, Nobody Barkley. cares when Kenny talks. Like, dude, it's just like, it's fucking great, man. Shaq and, and, and Barkley. But you need. All of them. You, every, you every, need, it's a perfect you, team. You need those two guys yeah. and then, to be the straight guys so Shaq and Barkley can be insane. And I, I love. Dude, I was, what, I was watching it last night, and Kenny was like talking about Ben Simmons. And talking about K, they were talking about KD and like him underperforming, how he's not getting crushed. And if this was LeBron, how bad he get crushed. And Kenny was giving his take on it. Shaq cuts Kenny off. He's like, Kenny, this you wouldn't understand something like this. You were a role player. You barely got in. Me and Chuck, when the star players, <laughs> it all comes down on us. And Kenny's just looking at him like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I just started, it's my job to talk. I'm giving my opinion. Just and now me. you're just like saying I was a scrub. He was like, dude, I could, I could talk about this. He was like, it's different. No one, no. <laughs> he was pretty much saying no one cares about your opinion. Yeah, your let the, opinion let means the stars nothing. talk. Like you weren't a star on the court, and you're not a star on the show, Kenny. Shut the fuck up. Uh, you're put, the you're the anchor here. I'm gonna put my paws on you, Kenny. Uh, we have Tennessee passes a bill requi- requiring drunk drivers to pay child support if they kill a parent. Tough law, g- good law. I, I think it's a good law. I think it's a good law. It's a uh, I, it's gonna put a lot of more people in jail because if you're getting if you're once you once you pay those DUI fines and then it's time to if, if you if if you somehow if you kill somebody God forbid yeah now you gotta pay child support I don't know how the how people don't pay child support when everybody's is. alive yeah so I mean it's gonna put a lot of people in jail maybe but but maybe dude if you're getting a DUI in 2022 with so with, many with options. Ubers and Lyfts. Yeah. It, it's you're a dickhead, dude. You're, I mean, you you deserve everything that comes your way. Back in the day, it was a little different. You couldn't you couldn't go any, no, no excuse. But like you couldn't you couldn't get around town. You couldn't get taxis. Right. You couldn't fucking go anywhere. Now like you you literally order a fucking car on your phone and it's there in minutes. So I mean, you deserve what you get. But yeah, this is uh this should be interesting. I'll see if we'll see if any other states. I, be, I bet other people pick I, be, it up. I bet they do. I, I love that idea because then, like, you, the thought of, like, usually the kid w- would go to the next of, you know, the aunts, the uncles. The aunt and uncle probably happy to have the kids. But, hey, that financial help. You know what I mean? That might well, that's help. a burden. Yeah, you, you, don't know, you don't know. You don't know. Okay, we don't have no kids. Or we have our kids. Boom. Now we get another kid. Like, right. holy fuck. That's expensive. And yeah, it, no one wants a kid that ain't. I don't care if it is your fucking niece or nephew. No one's ready to take a kid on that ain't right. theirs. People do it. I would, I mean, I would, don't yeah, be wrong. I, mean, I would yeah, do it. Yeah, we would it, all do but it. Like, but you ain't ready I'd for rather, it financially. Yeah, no, I'd rather have my, my brother or like my sister in law be alive and them take care of their kid. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, <laughs> no doy. Uh, German artist throws a party where everybody at the party was the same height. They had like some of these weird like adjustable like stilts <laughs> where they like took everybody like what? either added height or took height away. Oh, I love it. So everybody was the same. I wish Rosado was here for for this because this is kind of why I put it on her so I could talk about him being a shrimp. <laughs> but I don't think so. This is good. For, I mean, this would be a party you would you would love, Zberg. Yeah. As a fellow, sh- as you and Rosado are the, sh- guy, the yeah. shrimps of the the podcast. I would say shrimps. I'd just say short uh, <laughs> shrimps. What yeah. <laughs> vertically challenged? Would you would you be down for a party like this? I Why think you not? could thrive. I think you could thrive if everybody was just at six foot looking into each other's eyes. Why not? I yeah, I would love to try this spot. You know, what I mean, I'm gonna actually look into that video more, see exactly where them shoes are at. I think this artist is a genius, and I would like. That's to right, you're gonna throw a smack. Throw He's a gonna car- have a great throw- world's finest, yeah. tallest party. <laughs> I'm not coming. I the, the, there's a benefit, a major benefit of being Jack Welsh is being tall. You ain't taking that away from me. <laughs> well, I will once I get these still shoes. <laughs> the I'm elevator gonna, shoes. I'm put my paws on you. <laughs> dude, I, I wonder, like, it would be interesting to see how that turned out because dudes that usually shoot in their shots are, like, probably ain't pulling girls that, like, height's a, height's a, de- a deal breaker for some girls. So it probably it definitely leveled the playing field. Not with prostitutes. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's the crazy <laughs> thing about prosties. <laughs> nope, they're, uh, they're more for the buck. My, I mean, my girlfriend's 4'11". So, I mean, yeah. yeah. So you you look like a giant. Exactly. I said, I mean, I, I'm happy. <laughs> that, that, that works, dude. Imagine dating a girl that's like six foot. I actually, you know what I mean. We, this is a fucked up story. 
So I was living with Frank DiNardo. I just got out of rehab one time. He was like, you come stay here for a little bit. And I was like, all right. And I just found out about plenty of fish. And, like, I don't. I must have put my height in. Like, I, like that's one thing I wouldn't lie about. I'd lie about it and say I had a job, I had a car. I'd lie about it. But I'd tell them I was 5'5", five, five, you know, 5'4". Five, you whatever. might as well get in front of it. Right. Like, like, like here. But I, this one girl went on a date. And um, we met up in Squirrel Hill. Frank had dropped me off. I'm like 27 <laughs> years old. And we met at, at Baskin and Robbins. So we go, and like she's not bad looking, but she's super tall. And um, I remember like we're like getting along and everything, and uh, we're like walking down the street, and kind of like my hand goes in her hand, and, like she's holding my hand, and I just like look up at her, dude. And I felt like I was like out getting ice cream with my mom as a kid, dude. I'm getting like, ready to climb that tree. I'm like, uh, <laughs> dude, it ended up that this was. Okay, so <laughs> this is where it gets crazy. So uh, it, we no had, one gives a fuck about the ice cream. So we end up like hooking up. All right. <laughs> anyway, down the road, I'm working for Shuli. I tell she calls me while I'm at work, and she was like, "Where are you at?" I was like, "I'm about to go home." She was like, "Hurry up and get home." I left my parents' house. Blah blah. blah. Mind you, at the time, I'm she's 19. I'm 27. You know what I mean? So I was working for you. It was when, whenever you get married. I don't know. You remember dropping me off that day? I was like, I got to go home and meet this chick. So I dropped I, off a few places. Yeah. In my house. <laughs> but anyway, Shuli drops me off. This chick is there. She's in her car. And she was like, are we going in? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, all right, cool. Goes to the front seat, pulls out a fucking little, like a baby carrier. And there's a baby inside the carrier. Never told me she had a kid. There was like a real baby in there? There was a real baby in there. Like, probably like a year old, but like... She's like, you ain't babysitting tonight? She was like, I'm like, what the fuck's going on? You know, so we go in the hospital. Well, I don't like to tell guys because I'm only 19 and I have a kid already. So that makes them not want to date. And I'm thinking like, well, you know, I told you I had a car and I was lying about that. So I don't know how you kid. <laughs> Fair game. <laughs> no, we, we, <laughs> T- touche. We go in the house and my roommate's not there. So we're like, all right, dude. We like, she's like kind of getting frisky. And I'm like, all right, let me get a shower. I go take a shower. Fucking with the baby for a second. Sure, it's like getting aggressive with my wiener, you know what I mean? So like I'm just like there and uh, I'm looking over at the baby and the baby don't looks like he don't like it. Dude, you let a baby watch his mom watch his mom jerk you off? No. So listen what happened. So I'm like, this is freaking me out too much. I know so, this one. <laughs> I so, remember this. So I'm like, I'm like, this is bothering me. Like, I can't do this. She wanted some D bad. So I'm like, what are we gonna do? So there was my roommate had a dog and the dog was like jumping all over the baby. So I put the dog <laughs> in the cage. Then I put we put the baby in the corner and built a pillow fortress. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Put the baby in the corner, but built this beautiful pillow fortress around the baby. Went up what st- kind of dog we talking? It was a German Shepherd. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we I did up- a stat. Don't worry. The statute of limitations yeah, so, is up on us. But so we end up going upstairs for like, you know, six, seven minutes. Everything goes good. Come back downstairs. The baby's gone and the dog's not in the cage. So I'm like, what the fuck? The is dog going? ate the baby. What the fuck is going on? And it ran away. So I'm like freaking out. We're looking for the baby, looking for the dog. For some reason, we run out front because like the front like door, like it like looked like it had been opened and like the little gate was kicked on. And I'm like, oh my God, like this kid get out. Where's the baby? I'm like, baby. And she like started <laughs> calling his name and shit. You remember I, the baby's name? No. I ended up going out back and my roommate is back here holding this baby, laughing. And he was like, and their dog's just like running freely around the yard. <laughs> and like, he, he's like, what you thought I stole your baby? So he's like, he's in recovery too. He still is. Good dude. I going to say his name, but he, uh, <coughs> I ended up calling her like, hey, I'm like, everything's cool. My roommate came in. She's like, oh my God, thank you. She leaves, you know. He was like, dude, when I, when you moved in here, like, I kind of had a feeling you're a little bit of a wild card and like some weird shit might happen. But I hear some girl getting her back blown out. Then I look in the corner, and there's a baby in a pillow fortress. And then my dog's going potatoes in this fucking cage. He was like, dude, I'm like, what the fuck? Who did I let move in my house? <laughs> that's a, Dude, that's a lot to unpack when you're just getting off work. At, at one time, you know, it's not like uh, multiple situations. I'm like, dude, my bad. He was like, dude, like, let's just not have the chick. No bring, more babies. Yeah, bring let's, that baby over anymore. Let's I'm just like, set up a, a no baby, no baby policy. It's a no yeah. baby zone. Yeah. All right, we got a uh, we got a relationship story here. This one's kind of crazy. Uh, I'm gonna read it real quick. May have detected a cancerous lump on a guy I hooked up with. I went clubbing downtown and met a bouncer. And went home with him. I'm a resident co- uh, cardiologist and work I'm also a cancer doctor. I'm outside my specialty. 
However, I went to med school and I'm pretty sure I felt a lump on his on his balls and it seemed like it was cancer. I told him this might be cancer. I'm a doctor. He said, uh-huh, right. What's your favorite position? So this girl goes home with this guy. They're hooking up. She detects some cancer on a, a cancerous lump. Could be cancerous lump on his balls. She lets him know. They both still wanted to fuck. They went on to fuck. This girl's problem is she just met him. It was like a one-time thing. They haven't talked since. He works at the club. Should she should she go back to the club and be like, hey, man, like you probably should really get that lump checked out. It really could be cancer. I'm pretty sure it is. Or does she say, like, fuck it, let him find out on his own? That that would be cool if she would go back. I think. Wait, wait, wait. Be- did she did she bang with the cancer prick or she? Yeah, just, no, they fucked. She yeah. just grabbed his nuts like this doesn't look so no, good. No, she still had sex. No, they still. Yeah, she 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 kind of dropped it because she didn't want to like she still wanted to fuck. They both well, wanted that, to fuck. That seems like it's against the Hippocratic oath. You know, no, no, she told him. <laughs> yeah, I think I think she. I mean, that would be cool. One. I mean, she don't owe the guy shit. She already gave him a heads up. But I think it would and be some pussy. Yeah, she already kicked up the coos. So like, but that would be super cool on her part to go back down there and be like, dude, hey, what's going on? But like, hey man, did you ever get that checked out? Like, remember like, how swollen your left nut was, yeah. dude? Like that's not and natural. Maybe dude will be like it, Dude, what is what is this guy? If if I'm hooking up with a chick and she says she's a doctor and she tells me I could have cancer on my nut, guess where we're going? Hook up over yeah, Hospital not, time Yeah <laughs> how are you Busting a nut out I didn't even think of that Like how are you Banging her like Yeah dude I got like This cancerous lump of my It's dick. not like If some like Little dirt ball From like West Midlands Is it, they, it, is it her first semester or, Like fucking nursing school <laughs> And she says that That's one thing But if this chick yeah. says She's a fucking doctor And like she de- she detected cancer On your nuts You take that A little more serious that's, might, that's a red flag He might have said She might have said I'm a doctor his dick instantly got rock hard, and he said, I'm firing my babies in there. That's that true. Might, he might be an evil genius. Yep. 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 He's that, a, he's a, he, yeah, that's he, a Greenfield maneuver he's right there. Everybody, everybody was taught at a young age in Greenfield, if you get a doctor, you got to come. They taught that at St. Resilience. A, a mutual <laughs> friend of ours, he's like, he's like, if she got money, he's like, just dump your load. <laughs> Yeah, all right, pal. but yeah, I think I think she kind of has to go back and like let this dude know like how serious the situation is, and then they're probably gonna fall in love. If she saves his life. It's a great love story. So that's a rom com. Throw is Ryan Reynolds in there. Yeah, yeah, put Ryan Reynolds oh, yeah, in there. Yeah, you got a fucking movie. This is just the beginning of a beautiful story. <laughs> yeah, we we'll have to have an update on this one. All right, let's take a little break. All right, everybody, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. We will come back. We're on more Greenfield Times podcast. Hey, what's going on, everybody? If you're like me, you probably have appliances in your house. TVs, ovens, dishwashers, microwaves, all types of stuff. That shit's going to break. And when it does, make sure you call Primetime Appliance, 412-896-1395. They deal with all insurance and warranty companies. They do all the work. All you have to do is call 412-896-1395. Primetime Appliance. Give them a call. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm the host of Greenfield's Finest Podcast, Michael Z. Bird's Idell, and I'm not joking around today because I'm looking for your sports cards, sports memorabilia, or silver coins. If you're in the market to buy, sell, or trade, please contact me at 724-732-1644. Maybe you have some old cards laying around, you don't know what to do with them. We'll come over to your house, look at them, get them listed, and get some money in your pocket right away. 724-732-1644. No questions asked. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Are you sick and tired of hiring heroin-addicted roofers? I know I was. I had six of them fall off my roof in one day. I didn't know what to do. I found out about Allen Construction. Their roofers don't do heroin. So if you're looking for roofers that don't do heroin, call 412-954-8337. 412-954-8337. Make sure your roof stays and they don't come back at night to steal the shingles. Hey, what's going on, everybody? If you're sitting down right now and you're listening to the podcast or watching the podcast, you probably want to order a pizza. And if you do, make sure you order from Capizudo's Pizza, the official pizza that Greenfield's Finest Podcast, located at 422 Greenfield Avenue, phone number 412-521-6570. Mention Greenfield's Finest Podcast whenever you call. I don't know about you, but I ain't got time to be packing boxes and moving stuff all the way around the tri-state area. I just don't got time for it. But I got to move. What am I supposed to do? Thank goodness I found out about Miracle Movers. Fully bonded and insured, serving the Tri-County area. And they go long and short distance. I just found out they do commercial delivery too. That's Miracle Movers at 412-419-2620. 412-419-2620. And tell them Z-Bird sent you. 
If you're having lawn problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems and the grub ain't one. It's 2020. Time to get your motherfucking lawn right. If it ain't tight, it ain't right. You best call Rosado and Sons. 412-521-9045. 412-521-9045. And get your motherfucking lawn right. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Green for Podcast. We're about to jump into what's grinding our gears. Surely, get us get, get kicked off. What's grinding them gears? I got a fucking gear grinder this week, pal. <laughs> so, after being brutally snubbed for the fucking DV morning show uh, appearance, I listen to it and I hear the whole show. You guys killed it. You guys did great. I'm listening to it. And then that dude, I think his name's like Phil Crawford <laughs> from the VD morning show or something like that. He uh, gave a shout out to John. Which was awesome. John Rosado. He said his John full Rizzotto, name. John Rosado said his full name. John, he said John Francesco Rosado. And then he was like <laughs> Andy Shuley. Which, I mean, Andy probably felt great about it. <laughs> but that's not me. I'm not Andy Shuley. I mean, hey, probably a great guy. Probably a great guy. And the funny thing is, like, I would expect that from just some normal, you know, radio host or something that I didn't play Little League with or I didn't go to high school with or I didn't eat mushrooms with before. But, you know, hey, to each his own. Yeah. Did you guys happen to hear that at I all? Heard I heard it. Know. I heard it, and I was like, oh, no. And across the fence, he realized he did it, but he didn't correct it. And there is an Andy Shuley in, that, that went to Alder Ice. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, oh, he's only like 12 years older than me, so that's, <laughs> yeah. that's Listen, fucking cool. He's yeah. a good dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah great, great guy. Great, great guy. Hilarious. Hilarious guy. Hell of a hooper. Uh, <laughs> dude. It, it was brutal. It, it was cut rough. me. I ain't gonna lie to you. And it cut not, me. But I was ready to call Croft right then. Like you should have called in. The, if they take calls, you should have called in. Well, the yeah. show was over, and yeah. I was like, I want a retraction on Monday. But you know, <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It, hurt. it was tough. We. Uh, I heard it, and I was like, Oh man, I hope. Yeah, I that hope. dude. I hope that dude Phil hears this fucking mm-hmm. podcast because I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he said John's name as clear as day. Then he said, Old Andy Sholey, mm-hmm. man. Kicking the oh dick. man! Yeah, yeah, it, yeah he should have just stuck with the shoals. Or shoals yeah, man. yeah, yeah. You know, you could, that's a generalization. You could fit the whole family in there. <laughs> Piece of shit. Andy Shuley, Anthony, yeah. Amy, but every Shuley. interchangeable dude, yeah. like Phil and Bill Crawford, dude. But I hate uh, both of them. <laughs> Zebra, you got a grinder? Yeah. So we get every day. We get like thirty minutes for lunch, and um, one dude I work with. Paul, I'll say his name, Paul. <laughs> he's uh, John's cousin, and like a- as soon as I sit down for lunch, he's like, "You got to check this clip out." Oh man! And I'm like, uh, at first it's John's cousin, so I like let it go for like a little bit. He's been there now for like long enough that I can like be like, knock it off. <laughs> knock he, was, it off. he was like, "No, this is like reminds me of you." Like when you- I was like, Paul. You're holding me hostage with your cell phone. That clip is three minutes and 17 seconds long. So I'm supposed to sit there during my lunch when I like to do God knows what and look at God knows whatever. Eat. And t- talk to God knows who. I I don't want to look at your f- at this fucking clip. Like, you're literally stealing time away from my life. Every day that you bring one of these clips up to me, it's like you're holding a fucking gun to my head and robbing me of my life. And, like... Send it to me if you want me to see it. No, no, I know exactly what you mean because Rosa will hit me with that. It's like, you're holding me hostage to this stupid fucking clip that I don't give a goddamn about. Paul's my man. I mean, Paul's Paul's great. Paul's the best. But when it comes to that, he holds a hostage. And so did you let him know about that or yes. is Paul finding out right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was there and John started dying. It was Saturday. We're working. And I was like, listen, bro, it's Saturday. I get a half hour for lunch. Get that phone away from me. I said, I don't have time for that today. And he was like, no, it's just like a quick clip. I said, Paul, it's three minutes long. That's, that's, a, not that's quick. an eternity. Three minutes is so long when you're not interested. And when people are trying to force a clip on you, even if it's the best clip you've ever seen of something in your life, your you mind is going to let it come naturally. You send, hate it already. Send it to me and then text me a little message. Say, bro, check this out later when you get time. And guess what? I might or I might not. But there's a better chance I'll at least receive that information. You ruined that clip for me. And the clip was terrible. It was fucking stupid. Right, but even if it was hilarious, if you're forcing me to watch it, I hate it already. That's why I get it why people were like, hey, you guys need shorter clips. like Because that's all your attention span can handle. Right. Yeah, show me. 
one, it's either – so you either hold someone else's phone for that long, which is awkward because, like, they're watching you watch it, and, like, they're, like, staring at you, and now you have someone else's filthy-ass phone in your hand for three minutes, which you don't want. Or they, like, show it to you, and they, they hold it, and you're both watching it, and you're, like, cheek-to-cheek looking at the phone for three minutes for this fucking clip. Yeah, that's brutal, dude. You ever, you ever do the one where they show it to you and you, like, hand it back? Oh, yeah. All the time. And they're like, no, 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 yeah, no, right. no, no. You didn't get to the good part. Like, yeah, dude, dude, I don't, I don't want to fucking more minutes. see yeah. the good part. John was dying. I was like, dude, this is definitely a gear grinder. I'm like, dude, I know it's your cousin. I love him. He's a good dude. But, like, I, I can't Keep your phone that. to yourself, like, Paul. Like, I can't. Your time is Send your it. time. My time is my time. <laughs> If you want to talk, I'm all open. I'm open for conversation. But a three minute clip of something I don't want to see, n- negative. I'm done with it. Yeah, when I got steak and cheese all over my face. Negative. Right. right. I'm sitting here. I got pizza bagel sauce rolling down my face. And I'm yeah. Like, yeah, the other half's getting one. cold. Right. I don't got time for this. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one, man. That is. Uh, I think everybody's been in that. And, and it's even that tougher. Sucks. It's even tougher if you're not in a great like relationship. Like you known this dude forever, so you can say that. If it's someone that you don't know, like, am I gonna be a dick? Like, get your phone out of my face. Yeah, some people are, <laughs> yeah. Re- are very sensitive and will, like will, they, they won't talk to you ever again. Like, I can't Which might be a good thing. But that, yeah, that's also that's great. I got a little grinder. Uh, I was told I'm a bad recycler. I'm so. I move out to the suburbs, and now all of a sudden we have these cans. One's for garbage, one's for recycling. So I don't, I don't look at the, I don't look at the list of what I can recycle and what I can't recycle. I just assume I know what I can and can't recycle. I guess I don't, I guess I don't know because every other day it's like, hey, you can't put that in there. You can't put it. Like I put styrofoam in there the other oh. day. You can't, like, you can't recycle styrofoam. Like, dude, figure it the fuck out, recycling company. Like, do you want me to recycle or don't you want me to recycle? I'd rather not recycle. It all goes in the same fucking hole anyway. And now, like, I'm getting, I'm pulling out piss pads because they can't go in there. I'm pulling out recycling sh- or styrofoam because it can't go in there. Or there's too many fucking staples in this the cardboard. Or you can't it's put the fucking, lids. The separate. jars aren't fucking. Mm-hmm. I remember making fun of fucking risotto so bad for fucking. And washing on jelly jars. <laughs> Guess who's watching on jelly jars now? <laughs> it's like, dude, with the I, I don't this recycling the 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 chokehold waste management has on the recycling community is just fucking unbelievable, dude. Like, do do you care about the play? It's not I I can't figure everything out for you, dude. Do, do you want it separated or don't you want it separated? It's not going to be perfect. Take what you get. It's scare tactics to get you to do their job for them. Right. That's exactly what it is. Dude, it's scare tactics. I never realized you can't recycle, like, certain colored beer bottles. It, I thought it, they were all recyclable. No, take it all. It's not, not my job. They're not. Figure it out at the plant. There's right. And I'm colorblind. How do you know if it's green or brown? Well, that's because they want you to do it for them. You're, it's like packing your own groceries. Now you've got to separate your own recyclables. How are you going to drag it out to the fucking curb? That's bad enough. And then they got the thing that comes with, because all the garbage yeah, cans. Yeah, they just fucking pick it up and oh, body you slam guys, it. You guys are in the suburbs no. where the truck just comes and hooks into yeah, it and hooks dumps yeah. it. That was no, nice. We got old school in the city, yeah, dude. I they know. come and dump them bitches. Well, yeah. And they and, and then dude, they tell you, this, this like, I got a big garbage can. They were like, they put a sticker on it and said, ouch, it's too heavy. Like, why do you sell me fucking 35 Tell gallons? the guy to get out of the truck. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you, man. There's t- two bags in there. I don't know. I just I, I'm at my wit's end with the recycling shit. I I and like you get frowned at because everybody puts their cans out and there's two cans and like you don't want to be on the I think you actually get fined out in the bus. Yeah. Where, no, in the city just, you get it's fined. It's just like, dude, like it's not my job. I can't like I, what do you every time I have to throw something away, what am I supposed to hop on this uh, online and check your checklist to see if it makes it to the fucking recycling mm-hmm. bin or the garbage? I don't give a fuck. How about that? But the thing I don't is, give a fuck on, about on the news they had the other day that, like, <laughs> if you got all your shit in there together. And I don't. Went, what are you laughing at? I don't care about recycling. I'm fucking laughing because we're you, doing what a you, show. What are you laughing at? <laughs> are you fucking Captain, no, Captain just, Planet over there? No. Fuck recycling. Dude, I don't give a fuck if you recycle or not. I'm just laughing at you getting all fired up about this. It's fucking stupid. You but if me. you got one bad thing in there, they threw the whole fucking Yeah, they won't thing. take it. Yeah, they no, threw there's the too much away. jam in this jelly. You get the fuck out of here. That's what happens when you Eat a fucking dick. How about that? I, I add jam to jelly jars, dude. <laughs> Never be a sponsor here. <laughs> no <laughs> waste management, that's for sure. Let's take a break. I'm all worked up. <laughs> all right, everybody. We'll take a quick commercial break and we'll come back with more Greenfield Spies podcast. Hey, what's going on, everybody? 
Are you sick of your general contractor having sex with your wife? Well, I was too, and that's when I found out about Schaefer Inc. Schaefer Inc.'s primary goal is to deliver unbeatable quality for all your construction needs. They aim to firstly be a company principle driven, and to achieve this, the importance is ethical business practices. That includes great work and not having sex with your wife. Please check out Schaefer Inc. for all your contracting needs. Give them a call at 412-915-1694. That's 412-915-1694. Me and my wife didn't know what to do. We had a gigantic tree in our backyard that we had to get cut down. I've never done anything like this before. Who was I supposed to call? Luckily, I found Greater Pitt Tree Service, a locally owned and operated company. They came out, got to work, and got it done in a safe manner, and it didn't cost me an arm and a leg. Thank you so much, Greater Pittsburgh Tree Service. And they also do free work for World War II veterans. Please call 412-884-TREE. That's 412-884-TREE. What's going on, everybody? It's almost that time of the year where you got to go get your sidewalks or your steps fixed. And I don't trust a lot of these idiots out here right now. I really don't. Thank goodness Giuseppe and Sons is in the area, and they're always on the job. If you're looking for any type of masonry work this season coming up, please call Giuseppe and Sons. 412-421-6711. 412-421-6711. And make sure you tell them Rocco sent you, huh? Hey, what's going on, everybody? If you're having car problems right now, there's not really too many places to go that you can trust. One place you can is Meineke Car Care Center, located at 4103 Kennywood Boulevard, West Mifflin. They handle everything, not just oil changes, but brakes, maintenance, everything. So if you need, if you have car trouble and you need help, make sure you call Meineke Car Care Center, 4103 Kennywood Boulevard, West Mifflin, phone number 412 451 Eight nine six eight, and ask for Arthur. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Greenfield's Finest Podcast. We're about to jump into what would Greenfield do? What would Greenfield do? Whoop whoop. Would you rather know every time someone talks shit about you over text, or every time someone talks shit about you out loud? Oh, uh, dude. Hmm. I. So I'm receiving it by text. You're yeah. Sa- so you would either. Yeah. So you no, would, no, you're you not would, receiving. You're either finding out if they talk shit by text or or by word of mouth. Yeah, right? you're either reading it on text or, or you're you're, you're gonna it hear it. I'd rather hear it because that way context. Well, you could makes like, a big difference. Makes a big difference. If someone, it's hard to get like someone's tone from text messages. You know what I mean? Like You'd be someone, a lot more angrier if you just heard uh, like Shuli's text dick. messages slash emails come off yeah, a lot yeah. more straight. Like you said, context is context out of, is out the of key play. there. If someone says, like, ah, oh, Jack's a fat bitch, but they say it in, like, a playful way, okay. But if, say, if Jack's a fat bitch with fat nipples, <laughs> like, just through a text message, I'm probably going to get a little more pissed. I, I it, Like, this isn't a question, but, like, in your mind, like, where would you guys do this? If someone said something about you and you could know everything people said about you, would you rather know or not know? No. Ig- I, ig- I'd rather not know. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean... Fuck, dude. Sometimes the the shit I think about my own self is is not good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what everybody else is gonna think of me. You yeah, I'm I mean? sure there's a bunch of haters out there talking shit right. on the podcast. All right. the time. I don't want to hear that. I don't, I don't need, need that. I, don't, I mean, well, old Joe Rogan caught it. <laughs> since Joe Rogan, the critics, since the critics been on Joe Rogan, he has gotten two million subscribers. That's nuts. On top of what he had, so. Yeah, we'll take some haters. Yeah, haters are good sometimes for it. It's they're up the suit. Yeah, but suit. if I don't have to listen, it's even better. Yeah. If, if I don't have to hear it and everybody else hears it, fantastic. And they and they rally behind me. If we ever make it big, it's going to be hard to stay out of those comments. Oh, I'll tell you that much, yeah. They might get me to kill myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> would, you rather, would you rather be able to eat only cream cheese or ketchup? So you got to pick one. It's either cream cheese or ketchup for the rest of your life. What do you got? Cream cheese. You, you're saying cream cheese over ketchup? Yeah. Because, gonna... because of the dip factor? Yes. So, Okay, that makes sense. I'm going straight ketchup, dude. I love ketchup, dude. dude. I, oh, oh, man. Dude, dude my I daughters ever. eat hot dog buns with just ketchup. They'll take the hot dog out and just extra ketchup and just grease it. I love ketchup. I can't, <laughs> I can't get enough of it. Like, Lenny, like, makes fun of it. She, like, puts it out and, like, she, I, I'll put it on them. I put it, I don't put it on weird things, but, like, if I get some ketchup on a weird thing from the plate and I taste it, Part of me is like, man, those green beans and ketchup were fire. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, a little yeah, macaroni I mean. salad with a little touch of ketchup never killed uh, nobody. Macaroni and cheese with just a little bit of ketchup. Not, yeah, you can't go overboard. You know what? Cheese fries with ketchup. You ever eat uh, an egg yeah, with that, ketchup? That's ball. Yeah. yeah, eggs with ketchup, absolutely. Ball. See, I never she, liked it. Yeah, she like. I never liked it in uh, my life. I've never dude. not eaten eggs with ketchup. 
I, I, I've always had. Oh, okay. I, I thought it was saying, like a normal. My thing. dad used to do it. And I'm like, that's fucking gross. And then the one day I was like, I had like you said that I, like a breakfast sandwich. You like you never did that. Well, no, breakfast sandwich is different. I'm saying like on your eggs, right? Same. So I I did the thing you were saying. I had the the home fries or whatever the fuck was there with the ketchup, and then a little touch of my. It ain't so bad. Throw a little salt on it. Boom. Good. Dude, crush Dude, it with some toast. The amount I, the amount of ketchup I use for breakfast is it's gross, man. I just you home fries. Uh, home fries alone. I yeah. go uh, I go over the top and then I do two side puddles. To so dip. I get the I don't dip. I get the top, then I get the edges, and I move it over. And next thing you know, all that Heinz is gone, man. I'm a ketchup guy. I'm not a big like buffalo chicken uh, dip guy. So I. I it's ketchup all day for me. I agree with you on that one. Yeah, I, I would. I what do, do you What do you put on your glizzies? What do you put on hamburgers? I'm, I'm mainly not cream cheese. No, I right. don't. No, I don't. <laughs> hey, I, I'm a big spicy mustard guy. Okay, I, I do use ketchup on burgers, but like I could do. You live I could without live it. I, but like bagels and uh, like you know I mean I love the, a nice bagel and cream cheese sandwich with eggs. So good. It's so fire. Like that's like one of the most underrated things is putting cream cheese on a breakfast sandwich. Cream cheese, sausage. Everything bagel bomb, Fire. bomb. Uh, yeah, no, I would. Don't get me wrong, I love cream cheese. I'm just not like you as far as like the dips. Ketchup. I can't like oh ketchup, dude. The ketchup got a hold on me. It wasn't even the dips that held me in. It was me thinking about the breakfast sandwiches and what do I use more? And I definitely use cream cheese more than I use. So you're a as brown- far as breakfast, hundred percent. Yeah, cream. But you need it. I'm a big ketchup guy myself. Uh so you're a brown mustard over yellow mustard. Yeah, I like the. I like I'm white the, trash, man. I love yellow mustard. It's all about the situation, dude. Like, it if depends I mean, on what if you're I mean, saying. If I mean a brat, I need the the yellow spicy mustard. I mean, a lot of shit like kielbasa, anything like that. But if I mean like a soft pretzel, you got to go yellow, yellow mustard. Yeah, glizzy yellow mustard all day. Uh, absolutely, glizzy yellow mustard. But anything else, I could put that spicy brown. All right, we got one more here. If you're getting a haircut from a nine and you two hit it off and you exchange numbers. But she gave you the shittiest haircut of all time. Would you still call her? Yeah, hundred percent. No way in hell. What? You so, know, I'd wait. You, you didn't say I have to get my hair cut by the bitch all the well, time. Well, yeah, right? it's kind of it's kind of implied because if if she no, cut no. your hair and you guys hit it off and you start hanging out, you can't tell her like, "Hey, like I'm going to get a haircut. It's not going to be by you because you suck at your job." No, be like, babe, like, listen, dude, I know you're busy. And I really respect your time that you need by yourself, so I'm going to go get a nice You don't even say nice nothing. Haircut. You just call, hey, what's going on? What are you up to? Oh, you want to go do something? Sure. And then you just, why don't you do this? Just you, bang her out and never talk to her again? You do that. That's, that's, or you can that's wait, the move. Or you can hit <laughs> Obviously, that's Wait two weeks to hit her up, and right before you go out with her, you get a fresh new one. Right, Z-Bird. But the point is, she just cut your hair. So when she sees you, you have a haircut, she's going to be like, hey, who cut your hair? I didn't cut your hair. Right. She ain't, she ain't gonna throw up. No, like, dude, I moved. No puss, because you just you're basically saying you can't cut hair. You're terrible at your job. That's awkward. I, I that's just my solution. I'm Listen, sorry. I thought honesty was the best policy. Not I, I, all the time. That, I, I, would, I don't think I don't think it's a big deal to not get the haircut. Uh, I think you're v- underestimating. Like, dude, if you if you ever like broken up with a barber, it's awkward. I just never went back. I'd go to someone else. Yeah, but yeah. I don't. Have, I don't have to like I meet you say, and tell you we're I over. I will say this: there's like one place I used to go, and like if I would see them out, it would be like, "Hey, how you doing?" Yeah, you know, it, it was awkward. Like I'd see them down at waterfront. Sometimes. Perfect example: when BJ and Mike Watlin were cutting hair next to each other, I used to go to BJ all the time. Watlin got a chair. Start going to Watlin. He faded a little better at the time. It was awkward as fuck, and like pick, people had to pick or choose. It's awkward yeah. to move on from a barber, man. It's uh, it's yeah, not but, ideal. Yeah, but okay, you're talking about two dudes. You're talking about being awkward moving on with this chick that's super hot. And you're gonna smash her, though. Am I right? Well, you're I don't, saying I don't think she's gonna you, let you smash. Are her. Are you jeopardizing the whole smashing over that? I, exactly. I don't, I don't know, uh, dude. I thousand, I'll take a couple bad haircuts I, to get a piece. I agree. <laughs> I, mean? I agree with you. Yeah. So you're, uh, that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Well, I I'll changed take, my opinion yeah, now. They're, 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 you wear a hat. That's that's my point. <laughs> How hard she's is she? Not, <laughs> she's not. She's a nine. I'm she's, she's not throwing up. She's not letting you smash unless if, you're cutting. Her, unless you're getting a couple haircuts in. They're just if you go if you go get come with another haircut. It's game over, she dude. Doesn't. I'll just tell her to give me the even Steven. What, whatever. I'll, no, I'll take the fucked up haircut. Whatever. Say, give me the same one you did last time, and then like you I'm gonna eat me. your bungalow. And then it's right. over, right? Yeah. So you guys both agree with me now? No, Je- you said at first. You said fuck no. I wouldn't do it. 
What do you mean? I've always I no I said from the gate from the gate you were like no, I wouldn't call her back. I wouldn't call her. No, like, yeah, no, I wouldn't call her back because I, I wouldn't because I would think I I I'd rather not have sex with her. Are you having? Her. Are yeah, you yeah, taking yeah. the fucked I, up I, haircut I, for the piece of ass? Yes or no? If we're looking at fucked up haircuts for the rest of your life, no way in hell. Oh, right. we didn't say but rest for, of our for, lives. But for a, we for said a couple for a weeks, piece of yeah, ass. For a couple of weeks. Yeah, okay, right. So we can't right. Yeah, yeah, we couple, all agreed yeah, on that. We all came to our senses on that one. We, we kind of changed it. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you guys manipulated the question. Yeah, all right. Manipulated it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> all right, everybody. Well, everyone, thanks for tuning in this week. Thanks for all the new listeners. If you could please hit that like and subscribe button. One last thing real quick. Uh, this is the last week for voting for best podcast in Pittsburgh. Um I really don't think there's anyone else that should even be on the list. It should just be Greenfield's Finest Podcast five times. So go ahead and vote for us. Uh, we'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Also, we'll be back next week to announce the new $100 winner for the $100 contest giveaway. Anyone that shares any of our stuff and tags Greenfield's Finest Podcast, you get one entry in the contest. And then you could have multiple entries. And then I put it through a randomizer. And then you can win up to $100. Or you'll win $100. All right, everyone. Have a great week. And remember, Greenfield loves you. We're out. The old randomizer's back. Yeah.